plate, come on, grab your friends, we'll go and play some Tribes Ascend with Dark Matrix and Stowaway. It's gonna be great, it's behind a blue plate. Hello there, Tribes fans. Welcome to Wednesday Night. Welcome to Behind the Blue Plate. It is time to talk Tribes and all of the things that that entails. We've got a good panel for you tonight. And of course, we are rejoined this week by Stowaway. How are you doing tonight, Stowaway? Did you have a good week off? Oh, yeah, I had an alright week off. Uh, you know, Behind the Blue Plate once every Wednesday is so strenuous. I don't know how I do it. I don't know how I manage. Um, I just I, I took a well-needed break. No, I'm joking. I played a ladder match and we didn't play as good as we should have. Uh, the the chat's already calling for it, though. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Let's just ignore it. Um, I'd like to, you know, point out my TV here. I I sorted this today. I'm really, I'm really like, I'm really happy with it. Uh, in fact, I that's... had to run cables all around my room to do it, but it worked. Uh, uh, well, let's before I do the the main introductions, then let's uh, do the first topic, uh, which I forgot to do last week, and I'm really sorry. Um, but yeah, the big thanks to Jamie McComb of our Team Pelican for putting together the uh, very funky three dimensional rotating uh, blue plate logo that we can now use for the splash screen, uh, both before the show and during the interim. Looks very very cool, and uh, yeah, pleased to have something a little bit more dynamic than that flat image uh, that we had before. No. No disrespect to Ruinen, who did a great job and continues to do a great job putting graphics together for us. Um, but Jamie doing an awesome job putting together a 3D model as well. Yeah, Jamie's legendary. And it looks really nice. It's got like this all this kind of like metallic texture going on. Like it's actually got texture to it, not just like a flat thing. It's awesome. Yep. Cool. All right, let's, uh, let's move into introducing the panel then. We'll start at the, uh, the left-hand side. We've got, for the first time tonight, also from Team Pelican, we have Little. How are you doing tonight, Little? Hi, hi. Um, I'm doing all right. I was doing great, and then I ate like a million pounds of pizza, and then I died. A million pounds of pizza? That's a lot of pizza, dude. It is. Is that is that the uh, the requisite diet for the Pelican team? Uh, pretty much, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's all Jamie eats. It is. It's all I hear him talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, either pizza or what is he going to get put onto his pizza? But he won't go and cook a pizza if his housemates are in the kitchen, because he's scared of them. Jamie McCombs stayed out of his housemates. So, uh, yes. Yeah, flatmates. Yeah, yeah right. Of course he is. Well, um, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway we'll, we'll get Jamie on. He can tell us all about that. But at the moment, we've got Little on. Uh, little, it is your first time on the show, so we always like to get a little bit of background for people that join us uh, for the first time. So, yeah, what's your background? How many Pribes games you've played? Uh, what's your team background? All that kind of stuff. Um, I didn't really play any of the old tribes games um i started playing this in late beta well i guess i started in early beta but then i didn't pick it up for propers until until late beta um first team i joined was an american team actually called um hell dogs unleashed and i played in the um in the new bloods tournament with those and uh, that was fun and all eventually i went on to join um a team called Experiment that also went under like a million different names. Um, then I left, joined Clutch EU, and then we were named to Pelican, and that's it. So why did you join an American team to, to begin with? Uh, they advertised on Reddit, and I was looking to get into um, competition like in some way, and I didn't really know how to go about it. And I was like, oh, wow, this is a team that wants people. And uh, they were really not very good. <laughs> I was, I was going to say really shit, but then, yeah. Uh, um, had you heard of that team, Simtex? Sorry, what was that? The the team that Little's talking about is the original team. Have you heard of them over there in NA? It was back, going back a while now. Hell, oh, Hell Dogs and what was it? Hell Dogs Unleashed. So they were around roughly for the duration that's of the New Bloods awesome. tournament. Like, that's it. They They died pretty shortly after that. Was it the first New Bloods tournament or the second one? The first one, I think. Oh god, I don't, know. I don't even remember that. I remember playing in it, but I don't remember much about the teams in it. That was <laughs> yeah. so long. That was almost like a full year ago. I mean, for reference, we, I think we lost every game in that that we played in that tournament. Um, so that was fun. Cool. And what got you into Tribes? Like, if it was your first title, how did you encounter it? And have you played other games competitively? Um. Not really. I mean, I've played a lot of games sort of uh, semi-casually over the years, but uh, this is my first like proper competitive game, I guess. Uh, I ran into it just kind of randomly, I think, on the internet, and I bought the sort of beta bundle thing that they had going on. Um, 
and that's it really. I don't know. I don't exactly remember. Oh, little uh, Jenkso just posted the uh, the brackets from the first New Blitz tournament. You should take a look at that. Let's have a quick squiz. Here we go. Oh yeah, there we are. HDO, Helldogs Unleashed. Yep. Oh, we actually did win one game. Huh. Go figure. This is Avis Minactra. There we go. Yeah, you did. You, uh, Aftermath Revenge. Looks like you took a couple maps off him. That's pretty crazy. Uh, that's some old when was that stuff. then? That must have been a little while ago. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to find a date. I don't think... Does it have a date on it? Doesn't look like it. This was about a year ago, I think. I want to say it was in July. I'm pretty... No, it was like June, July-ish. I'm pretty sure. It was about a year ago, anyway. Fair enough. So, do you reckon that Little sounds a lot like Dignitas NVC? Um, I can see where you're coming from. Like, there's a similar kind of vocal fry thing going yeah. on there. I just think Little speaks really quietly. Fair enough. Have you met NVC Little? Um, I talked to him once, maybe twice. Okay. Um, but I wouldn't say I think I sound very much like him. I don't know though. Where's he from? He's English, right? NVC is English, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're you're British as well, little. No, he's not. No, I'm Swedish. Oh really? You've got uh, quite a British accent for a Swede. I oh, hope that's not insult. <laughs> say that a lot. Cool. All right. Well, it's uh, it's great to have you on the show this evening, little. Uh, very Thank keen you. to to hear your input. Oh, one other question, actually. So you you're you're a sniper for for Pelican. Have you always been a sniper? Has that been your role, or is that something you evolved into? Um, I started playing the game like hating the guts of every single sniper and being like, wow, this class is the worst thing. Um, and then it, I just kind of adopted it and um, started just loving people calling me an aimbot. <laughs> and, um, then I just stuck with it. Uh, I actually did cap a lot um, in my early days of competition, though. So, cool. I don't know. And do you, do you think that's a role you'll stick with, or do you, th do you think you're uh, going to move on? Um, I might be moving on pretty quickly here. We'll, we'll see what happens now. Stay tuned. Yes. Fair enough. Uh, moving on uh, to the, the middle panel that we've got, we have Yod Zankai uh, from Dirty Little Secrets. How are you doing tonight, Yod? I'm um, good, thanks, man. How are you? I'm very well, thank you for asking. And uh, again, your first time on the show, really happy to have you here. Um, and same question I threw at Little, like, what's your sort of background with tribes and competitive gaming? Uh, I have no competitive gaming um, background at all. Uh, actually, it's basically like Little. I, uh, about a year ago, I joined a team for the New Bloods tournament, played about one game in it, and then it proceeded to collapse. And, uh, yeah, I've just been with DLS ever since. Real quick, what team was that? That was, um, Friendly Fractal Frenzy. It, this was the EU New Bloods. It wasn't that? I it's thought that, DL, that turned into DLS. Yeah, yeah, basically it is. Oh, okay. Very different roster from what it is now, but the same thing. Okay. So, I mean, talking about DLS, uh, I mean, we'll talk about it, actually, no, we'll talk about it when we get into the ETL section. Um... Because, yeah, that was uh, some interesting stuff that happened in the, the relegation matches. Uh, so, yeah, so Tribes was your, your first sort of, I guess, serious uh, title. And sort of how have you evolved through the game? Have you always played? Like, what role are you playing? Uh, I mean, Stowe told me you're, you're playing light defense at the moment. Has that always been your kind of specialty? Uh, I started off as a standee. And, uh, it, yeah, it just gradually evolved through there. Like, um, Kakoop tried me on LD and he took the stand and, yeah. Ever, ever since. And do you think that's something you're going to stick with? LD, yeah, definitely. Cool. It's definitely my favourite position. So uh, what's your opinion on the state of chasing in Tribes Ascend at the moment? Uh, I know in NA it's a lot more... Uh, well, I don't know, I just... It can't be done. It can't that's be all done? That's what I'm going to say. It can't be done? What? It can't be done properly, this, man. You can chase on some maps, uh, like uh, I mean, Bella, you Bella, you can totally chase to the side routes. They have like a 20, 25 second return time. Yeah, I'll just... Go ahead, yeah, To be fair, I see like you and, and Refi and, and a lot of like good European LDs chase very effectively a lot of the time. You're being a bit unfair there. 
Yeah, there's definitely some routes that you can chase. There's, to be fair, there's some that you can't, but there there are some that you can chase. There you go. So, uh, already brought up some controversy without even me. Yeah, man, to. we haven't even done intros. Let's just calm <laughs> down here. Because... Let's, let's, let's not go NA versus EU here. We've still got to introduce Simtex. Which uh, we'll move right on to Simtex. It's your second time on the show, I believe. Uh, great to have you back. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been quite a while since you've been on. So how about a quick bit of background on yourself? Uh, well, before Chives, I was competing decently at uh, StarCraft 2. This was a long time ago, back when Diamond was the uh, the top league. But eventually I stumbled onto Tribes and I just stayed away from StarCraft for a little bit. And since then I've just been a community member and more recently a competitive player. Um, recently you kind of thought you were going to step away from Tribes and, and then you came back. What was, what was the decision that, that brought you back to the game? Uh, StarCraft just didn't really do it for me anymore. Uh, there was just a local tournament that I really wanted to win. Uh, I was actually undefeated uh, like three or four times there. But uh, so I managed to take second. Someone else, uh, my quote-unquote rival there... <laughs> Was able to uh, beat me uh, three one, but uh, Starcraft just doesn't—it just doesn't do it for me anymore. Also, you can be uh, much more lazy with tribes than with Starcraft. Starcraft, you actually have to train a lot harder. So if you have less time, then I mean, obviously tribes like you don't—you don't have to practice as hard as Starcraft. Like, I mean, I would say that not many competitive players actually practice tribes outside of scrims, even. Do you think which you just—you just can't do with Starcraft? Do you think that's uh, a reflection of the skill level in the game or the mindset that you need to play the game or just because there's so many more people playing StarCraft? Well, I think it's actually just a different skill set in general that you that you have to learn. Like, uh, Tribes is all about like teamwork, I would say, and execution, and you, you need to learn those in scrims, which you can't always get. But in StarCraft, like, you can, you can improve it just against a single-player AI, like, vastly. Like, there's so many little things you can do in there that... It's it's hard to do that in tribes, like training in tribes is, is weird. It's, it's not the same as StarCraft. That's uh, that's interesting to know. I mean, Stowe, you've played a little bit of StarCraft. How have you found it? Uh, I haven't played StarCraft in a little while now. I find it difficult. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I find it. I'm very Bronze League hero. Um, you're in Silver League now, though. I am in Silver League now, but I'm pretty sure they're basically the same thing, now. Since, uh, what is it? Um, forgotten what the patch is called. Heartless One. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I haven't played Star StarCraft in a while. I don't think I, I don't think I have the ability to do it well. Well, again, like Simtex said, it probably just takes a hell of a lot more time uh, to get good at something like StarCraft as opposed to, to try. So I'm not sure I completely agree with that. Oh, I, I would agree. Um, I agree with that. Personally, well. uh, yeah. Look, well, you played a lot of uh, Starcraft, so I, I mean, I have ADHD, so I don't think I could stick to it for that long. Um, I don't think I could stick to playing Starcraft just because of the amount of like concentration you'd have to put in it. Like, you can practice tribes just going into That's a pub true. and practice chaining against people and not really care and zone out. Whereas I don't think you can do that as much in Starcraft. At least I can't. I don't find Starcraft very relaxing. Like, if I no, just want to chill don't out, you find any game actually. Tribes is probably the most relaxed I've seen you uh, when playing a game. Like, this I've played true. you at Quake, I've played you at StarCraft, I'm sure I've played you at yeah, Counter-Strike, and you always seem pretty uh, pretty on edge. I guess because I'm crap at all those games, Tribes is the only thing yeah. I remotely even, you know, have a chance at not being a complete scrub. Yeah, <laughs> like, like in, in Tribes and pubs, you can just, like, like take it easy. Like, but in StarCraft, you can't really take it easy. Like, if you do a team game to relax, then, you know, you're not going to be carrying your weight if you don't try. But, like, you can just not try in pubs, and it just doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, exactly. I, I, I totally agree. I mean, they, I thought they were going to get closer. I mean, we're sort of getting off topic. I thought they were going to get closer to that with, like, the, the unranked thing on StarCraft. But I found that more or less just as stressful. Really? I actually, I love that. Um, <laughs> we're just talking talking about we always seem to stand up talking about other games at the start of each show behind the starcraft yes i think there's enough starcraft shows i'm not even going to try to increase yeah there's, there's, there's a few i don't think <laughs> we can like break into that scene <laughs> yeah cool well, let's uh let's move into the tribe stuff so what's uh first on the card okay so first um we've already said thank you to jamie obviously for that so we'll move on to uh will zone this is just a kind of re-going over wilderzone.org you should go out and check it out um recently i think there's been a lot more submissions to it as people have signed on and added videos and stats uh, more people are now on the stats pages and things like that so you can go and check out where your rank is um so that's wilderzone.org you might have missed it two weeks ago we kind of um got to premiere it 
I guess. Um, and it's Holmes from IDK, and I think he worked with uh, a couple of other people like Hausier, maybe? I feel like Hausier, Hausier helped him a lot on the graphics side, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So um, you should definitely go and uh, make sure you bookmark worldazone.org if you haven't Let's up see to this where... point. Simtex, you're on a leaderboard somewhere. Uh, what are you on? You're on the headshots. Um, You're number 100 in headshots, Simtex. There you go. Oh, oh there you go. Oh, shit. Oh, not have expected that one. That means you're the 100th best player in tribes. Yes. Oh, of course. That is how it works, actually. Little, you've got a few. Uh, Little is number 53 sniper in tribes, number 22 headshots in tribes, 66 assists in tribes, and 79 most time played. Wow, Little, you've put some time into this game. 49 days. I have, Oof. yes. There's, um, there's also a new like stats thing where you can see time played by class. That's kind of a cool stat, I think. Well, and Yod is Oh, how much more. time you've actually played in each class, yeah. Yod is yeah. number six on total kills. Frag monkey. Yes. Well, here's LD. LD for you. <laughs> Five in a I think six. it's in the EU mumble, LD is actually called uh, Frag Horse. Frag Horse, yeah. yeah. Cool. So yeah, I mean, so if anybody hasn't seen this, it's amazing. Like, it is so cool just playing with the stats and, uh, you know, looking up, you know, your, your teammates or favorite players or whatever and just seeing, you know, all, all the different, well, statistics, I guess you would call it. Uh, oh, wow, it even knows that... Uh, okay, so it does this. I think this is new. So I'm, I'm just looking at um, Yod's uh, profile here and down below it, like, matches up his tag against other people with that tag. And so I've got the oh, entire wow, DLS team here. I think this is new. This is really cool. Uh, so there you go. You can figure out entire clans on this uh which is pretty neat that's really i haven't seen oh, players before. by tag you can search for tags yes. now that's awesome look at that he's added a ton of stuff a bunch of new wallpapers as well wow yeah so that's Very like cool. really cool i actually have uh, one of those wallpapers still um as my main wallpaper um so yeah that's wildazone.org and uh you should definitely check that out because um some people worked very hard on it and it's a really cool place to get your stats because i think the uh, TS stats page is uh, good, but I think this is just a really nice way of displaying it. Um, awesome community effort still coming out from there, and bookmark it. Yeah, I mean, if if I was high res, I would just shut down their stats page and forward everyone onto this because uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, that, it's, it's awesome. so good. <laughs> I think it's now been put on the fan pages of the uh, Tribes Ascend homepage or something like that. Oh, surely it would um, be. Yeah, yeah, like you'd, you'd hope so. Um, because Wilson Dog was a kind of startup for something like uh, like news and other things, wasn't it? News and like it was Greth and uh, I think Zero Methanol and a few people tried to make yeah. Wilson Dog happen. There was supposed, like you say, it was supposed to be a news site. It was kind of like a companion to you know reddit in the sense that you would have more long-lived articles sitting on Wilderzone, match reports, that kind of stuff. Um. But yeah, as is the case with a lot of, uh, you know, content-based websites, they can dry up pretty quick if the if the admins aren't particularly, you know, invested in keeping it up to date. Sure. Namil's actually posted it. It is on the uh, fan pages and so he's just oh, awesome. to it. So that's awesome. Um, so cool. Um, and that's just, I suppose, a quick shout out to that. And if anyone um, hasn't checked that out to this point, but... Uh, I guess we can move on to what's been happening in the tournaments, as we always do at the start of each game. So, um, I mean, uh, unless anyone's got anything more to say about that. No, not really. No, we just, okay. we just I mean, wanted to bring it to everyone's I, attention. I guess I find it kind of strange that he doesn't have... It was Holmes that did the stats comparison thing, right? Yes. Yeah, yes, that's true. Is. Yeah, it's kind of strange that that's not on, on Will Design, I think. But... It's a good point, actually. Uh, well, it does it, but better now, right? The actual comparison um, thing? Can you, like, can you match up? Oh, okay. I think that still is live, though. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, yeah, I don't think he can do that yet, still. Okay, cool. Because I think I think he, like, uh, had the stats comparison site, and then Hyrus kind of said, oh, you, you you know, you can't do this yet. You're taking data that's sensitive or whatever, or we have limit we have limiting access to. And then they worked with him, and he got to use the make that site, and then he went on to get more stuff from them and then make worldazone.org with like their uh blessing i guess um their their permission mm. so i mean the, the site is still up definitely the original comparison site yeah that's just on the epsilon side isn't it yes yes yeah cool all right well let's uh let's shift into the uh the tournament stuff 
So in EU at the moment, the tournament stuff we've got going, obviously EU uh, relegation matches are happening for Season 2 of EUTL, and they're, I think they're done, um, actually. well underway. Oh, are, are they done? Kind oh, of. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. if they're going to play the last one, because there's no point. Um, but if we just bring this up, so uh, this is sort of like the, the final uh, state of play uh, within the EUTL and the relegation matches there. So you can see that uh, NMZ and 1UP uh, effectively stay in the Pro League. So the, the top two teams from this... In fact, it might be the top three teams, because I think Orem aren't playing. I mean, uh, Yods, can you can you confirm or deny that? Is, is DLS going into the Pro League this season? Mm, no. Okay. Not that I've heard any. I didn't know um, Orem was stopping, so... Uh, yeah, that's what I've, I've been hearing quite a lot of, that they couldn't pull a roster together. I'm not sure if that's official, but I'm pretty sure it is official. Um, that they're not going to be playing since Season 2, just because uh, they, they lost a few players, and uh, couldn't scrape them together in time. Uh, so... I don't know, maybe if uh, Lumber or, or G-Reaper is in the chat, they can get us up to date on, on what's happening in terms of um, the Pro League and, and who's going through. Uh, but if we were to take just what was going to happen, if, if everybody, if everything went the, the way it should have, then basically there was no change. Uh, so, you know, DLS uh, unfortunately fell short of 1UP um, and NMZ. So, I mean, Yod Zinclair, how, how did those matches go? Like... Uh, yeah, is there any particular reason you think you guys might not have been able to, to take it over 1UP or NMZ? Um, no, they're two pretty strong teams, to be honest. And uh, On the day, they just beat us. I mean, obviously, we if we played a perfect game, maybe I think we could beat those teams, but just uh, those particular days. You 7 um, owed NMZ on, on Drydock. Right. That's uh, pretty impressive. I wasn't expecting that. Um, the results were as I thought they would be, but but that's pretty cool. Well done. Thank you. So, Stowe, I mean, you played in uh, one of the relegation matches, didn't you? I played in two, I think. Okay. And I missed one of them, I believe. So, was it the one-up oh, game last Wednesday? No, I think I played in all of them. Because I know you lost the one last I think Wednesday. I, was missed, that one -up? I played in two, all three series, but missed one of the matches because it was moved to a different day, which was recently. Okay. Um, against Climax. Okay, well... So, sorry, what was your question? I was just wondering, uh, so, I mean, the only loss that NMZ had was versus 1UP. So... Yes. Actually, yeah, no, there, there is... Wait. Well, I wonder if there is any... So, I'm just looking at the rounds now. If 1UP were to beat... Uh, sorry, yeah, if 1UP were to beat Climax, they could technically have more points. Uh, I don't know if that would make any difference going into the Premier League, though. I guess they'd be a higher seed. Yeah... Does seven or eight make much difference, though? Probably not. Yeah, so maybe... I, I just assume that they're not going to play it, and that's why it's just still grayed out. Uh, so mm. let, I don't think they've slated the uh, the Pro League draft yet. So yeah, the, the Pro League hasn't been actually lined up, so I'm not exactly sure when it's going to kick off. We did have G-Reaper on last week, uh, talking about it, talking about the rule changes and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah... To be fair, I didn't even know we'd gotten through to the Pro League yet, so I'm not very up to date with it. <laughs> yep. Well, certainly um, NMZ and 1UP will definitely be in the Pro League uh, going through to, uh, you know, Season season, season 2. two. Uh, yeah, there's not too much else to talk about. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about rule sets. Uh, yeah, we can, I was actually going to mention that. We can definitely get into... Well, take it away, Stu. Well, yeah, I mean, it's... it's uh, a lot of talk has been happening about the rule sets recently. I think even physics have been played about with uh, recently EU scene that we've uh, mentioned before. Yeah, Alex has been uh, leading that charge. I believe that the, there's going to be a vote coming up relatively soon set up by... Um, who is it? G-Reaper? No, G-Reaper? Or Lumberjack, one of the two. Or we? Lumberjack. It just says admin here, so I assume that's Lumberjack. Um about you know the the current options for the next rule set so you've kind of got the uh current ladder rule set which is the one used for oh current ladder rule set sorry that's the uh ladder which i believe is the same as eutl season one then you've got the season two rule set which is an updated version of that or the natl rule set the cluster rule set which i think that's a physics forget. change isn't it possibly so quick. yeah that's possible and then you've got crystallite's uh version oh, no. of cluster Alks modified season two rule set and JPY suggesting to use the same rule set eight in ATL is going to be coming up with. So I'll actually link to this page and uh, people can have a peruse through. I think there's like a thread open, see what people are thinking, but it's not an official vote yet. 
Um, I'm in favour of a rule change. I'm not exactly sure um, what needs to be done. Um, I pretty much just show up and play. Um, well, let's uh, throw it to our panel. I mean, Little, what, what's your thoughts on the rules going into Season 2? Uh, and which one would you be in favour of? Uh, so first up, just a quick correction. The uh, current ladder rule set is actually not the uh, EOTL1 um, okay. rule okay. set. It's the um, the old ladder rule set. So right, I see. with mines and everything, um, I really, really shit. Uh, I think the um, to me the the IC rules are by far the best ones. Um, I think that's one of the few that I've actually played with. Is the that... IC ones are the it's the uh, the EOTL two ones. I think. So the season two thread. rule set that's ICs. Yeah, hang on. I just think I closed that thread. <laughs> so possible reset, base assets disabled, uh, reach banned, safety third banned, sonic punch banned, uh, no jackal smoke, uh, grenades, prison mines, stealth spin, fusion, shock glance. Wow, infiltrate is getting shut down pretty hard. Sentinel, yeah, I mean, I think this is the one we talked about most. So what's the main week? difference yeah. between this and EUTL season one? What are the main uh, things to look at? Um, well, I think like just the the new no claymores is a really big thing. I really need to have this in front of me right now, though I can't find it. Uh, I have a link I can paste it to in IRC. Do that. Okay, it's in the uh, clutch channel. Yeah, I think. You secret IRC channels. Yes, so secret. Um, yeah. So all deployables banned on dangerous crossing and crossfire. Um, one sniper, one infiltrator, one force field to limit, and all mines are banned. Like just the the claim or thing is a pretty big thing, um, and the no base assets obviously like the big biggest. Yeah, that's that pretty big. I forgot about that. Just getting used to it in pugs, I guess. Um, but it's like just sort of the complete removal of tech D um, is the the main point of it. So what are the so what are the front runners in terms of popularity in terms of rule sets? Like which ones are the most likely to be voted on? I'm pretty sure the one that's going to win is the UTL season two one. Um, so the IC rules that we just talked about. What would be the closest runner up? I don't know. I think it's a stomp in favor. Of, well, I would think it's a stomp in favor of that anyway. I the, I'm, could be wrong, I suppose, but the the cluster rule sets are very sort of LT like. They're they're fun. I mean, we played um, we played Flam once with the the old version of the cluster rules, and it was a bit stale, I guess, but it was still fun. Like we could definitely do it for like an alternate ladder or something. That'd be great, I think. Um, but I'm pretty sure the it's not getting any big big numbers in terms of votes. Well, uh, talking about voting, me a throw one into the uh, the chat. Get everybody in the chat involved. Uh, whether or not they like the icy pan rule set uh, let's see how much popularity this has within the viewers so yeah i mean yod sinclair what's your point of view on the rule set and where it's likely to go uh icy rules all the way enough said fair enough not even gonna <laughs> consider anything else like i mean is there anything you would criticize honest, in the icy I, pan I haven't set? played the cluster um rule sets so i can't really comment on those but uh, no, icy rules is a huge step in the right direction i think in what way? Like, what? What's the, you know, what's the the coup d'état of uh, IC's rule set? What's the real big thing that's going to make it, or you feel that's going to make it the the bee's knees? Just like a uh, little said, no tech D. Okay. No decent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think the uh, the NATL rules are probably the closest runner up. I didn't even know they were in there, but apparently. Fair. Enough. Yeah, I mean. The whole phasing out tech D thing as as much as you can really does make sense. It's not something I'd played before, and then I played it like once and got fifty kills. And coming from me, I like in a pug, I shouldn't be getting fifty kills. And it's most people seem to agree. It's like oh my god, you played tech D in a pug. Are you? <laughs> yeah, I know. I felt really bad. I really did. Um, and people berated me for it. Um, it was on Sunstar as well. Um, yeah, it's. It, most people seem to agree it's not fun to play. It just it, you have to do it to to if uh, for on certain maps. So uh, in the chat there was a landslide thirteen to no, uh, zero uh, wanting the uh, the IC pan rule set. So looks like the guys are siding with you, little and yods, in terms of what they want. I mean, uh, Simtex, does this ring any bells for you guys over in a in terms of rule sets? 
Simtex. Hello. Anyone? Simtex. What do you think? He can't hear GG, us. GG, Emmerich. Fail. Is he using his wrong push to talk again? I don't think he even can hear us at the moment because he's not responding. Oh well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll we'll get to Simtex eventually. He'll figure it out from the chat, I imagine. Okay. He's, he's typing in the chat. Audio is gone. It's on his end. Okay. Well, Simtex. Uh, we'll, um, we'll wait for him to get back. He'll he'll figure it out. Okay, we'll, we'll work this out. Anyway, um, so uh, that pretty much covers EUTL. Then there's also, I mean, uh, I, I feel bad moving on like this, but I think that's, no, that's pretty much it. covered it. Yep. Um, just shout if there's anything, but uh, the other tournament going on at the at the moment in the EU is the TAW uh, tournament, which the, the Art of Warfare have set up a tournament. Um, that not everyone is competing in. I don't think many teams have competed in it. Pelican has basically absorbed half of Vertigo to play in it. Um, I know NMZ uh, are currently playing. Um, and if, uh, obviously a few other teams that are into it. Um, it's a bit of a different rule set. Uh, Little, have you like, been playing in this one? Uh, yeah, we've been playing in this. We picked up, um, actually, since Vertigo didn't sign up for this, we picked up Late and Am um, to play in it as well with us. I um, thought Shaz also was playing. Mm, I don't think so. Okay, okay. I want to backtrack uh, just a little bit. Syntax in here. Is... Doesn't look like it. Okay, sorry. Let's keep going. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's... Um... Just to quickly rant on this tournament a little bit, it's probably one of the worst run tournaments like I've ever played in. Um, I've tried to get in touch with an admin before every single game, and they just don't exist. I tried I've to get tried in touch asking. with them so that I could, you know, pimp them a bit on the show, and no, no luck, unfortunately. So I feel yeah, your pain I, a little. I tried asking JP and and, and Griper and and stuff to see if they could find them or something, but. Um, but no, they basically don't exist. It's I forget what the guy's called that runs it. It's um, C something. Things um, are working again. Yay, Yay. Simtex, you're back. <laughs> nice. Uh, all right, I'm going to pause that conversation for just a sec. Simtex, did you have any comments on the rule set stuff? I haven't actually played with the rules, so I don't really want to give an uneducated opinion on it. Okay, that'll do. So back to TAW. Okay. So it, it's don't you find it interesting, Little, that even though the admins aren't around, the tournament can keep rolling on? I guess... The only issue you have with that is if there's kind of, uh, you know, rule disputes or anything. There's probably no one well, there to resolve it. Uh, yeah, exactly. And um, that was kind of the reason I wanted to get in touch with them before the first game, since we picked up um, and the, those two bad guys for like as as subs for the the tour tournament. Um, we wanted to know if if it was legal, right? Um, but there was literally no way of checking that, so we ended up playing with it anyway and. Climax was mildly fine with it. I'm not sure, actually. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's a weird tournament. And the guy's called Fist, by the way. Um, oh, yeah, Kibis. Be, yeah. yeah. I think uh, I think the Art of Warfare have their own, like, team speak thing. So they're not even in the, the community mumble or anything. Yeah, so I believe. Bit, uh, Go. No, just very questionable tournament overall. It, once we get to out of the group stages, I don't know if they're going to be there to even, like, do anything. I don't know if there's any prizes involved. I don't... I like... couldn't find any information on this at all. Um, so outside of this group stage bracket here, I can't really uh, say anything. But, I mean, all we can say is the Pelican are currently winning Division 1, um, which is an interesting division because there's, you know, a team missing there. So already it's a bit, <laughs> a bit off. Um, Nimbleminds Eternal. I don't even know what that is. Uh, Stowe? Is this like it's a enemy? NM? That's N NM. Uh, I think they used to be called NMEU, and now oh, it's okay. N so just this is NM. The other Nimble it's it's the secondary Nimbleminds team, I believe. Gotcha. Um, oh yeah, I should probably mention why they're doing this tournament. Actually, um, I read this a long time ago, before long before they started this, in, in some email, I think. Um, it's because they think the old rules are better than the new rules, like with the mines and stuff. So this tournament actually goes under the, the old ladder rules, like uh, mines are allowed, tech D is just full-on super overpowered. 
um, all of that stuff. So they're trying to prove to everybody how good those rules are. Um, so I think that's just reason enough to think that tournament is completely retarded. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, when we've played, like, we had similar things where we couldn't find admins for it, and, you know, um, we were short of a, pl a player, and we wanted to bring on Chris Light to snipe, um, just so we had a sniper for the game, and we asked, uh, I think we asked PLD, and they weren't happy with us bringing on Chris Light, so we brought in someone else. Well, um, just I'm not because, surprised at that. Well, Chris Light is a sniper, you know, he's not a, a, an amazing sniper, you know, he, he's, I'm not, I don't, I haven't even seen him snipe, so he isn't, like, you know, um an overpowered sniper or anything like that but whatever um but but yeah so we had things like that where we weren't able to contact admins and stuff and then we just played the new rule set anyway because we checked before and we were like wouldn't you prefer to play the UTR rule set and the other team was like yep so we did fair enough we did the same so um yeah interesting tournament so far Yods uh, have our, you been in anything? Our philosophy for that tournament is just um EOTL rules for the all the matches and then against Tor just D stack with tech. <laughs> Teach him a lesson, you think? Yeah, that's the idea. Uh, Yods, are you in any of these teams? Uh, no, no. Uh, we as soon as I heard it was the old ladder rule set, um, I just really didn't want to play it. So, and I spoke to the other guys and they didn't want to play it either. Well, I mean, it sounds like you guys aren't missing anything. Like I said, even even for the show, I, I really couldn't find any useful information outside of the Game Shrine bracket. Um, but yeah, another testament to Lumberjack that this thing just kind of ticks on <laughs> without even the admins there, uh, even if there are no arbitrators. But anyway, so yeah, just keep an eye out on the TAW tournament, guys. Um, hopefully, you know, Cubist and company show up at some point to, you know, maybe rein in everything a little bit and, and put it back on track and maybe give us some information on... Even like you know, what's the point of winning? Is there is there a prize? Uh, I imagine there'd probably be some tribe skull or something in there. Uh, it's pretty rare these days you get a tournament with absolutely nothing at the end. So yeah, that's about it. So yeah, what's small next? games. Uh, just quickly, I want to shout out to seen in the chat that King of the Juice says this might be the last time we see him in chat or in tribes at all. Notice that. And I want to say I'm very sad about that. King of the Juice has probably been around since the first day I pugged. Yep. And he is an awesome dude. He's a very nice guy and. I'm gonna miss him, man. If he's if he's leaving, that's that's maybe sad. Maybe he'll come back in three days. Maybe. I mean, he he's quit tribes, but he's about to quit quit watching streams. Well, apparently he said this last week. So <laughs> <laughs> tribes are one of them things, but I don't know. I don't I don't like that. This is this is rumbles in the jungles. Well, yeah. Maybe we'll get a call in from him. Hint hint. Yeah, dude. Maybe we will get a call in from him. Hint hint. If anything else, just to hear his funky voice again. Love that voice. The Americans love his voice. He would spend all this time in the American mumble and they would literally just rub up against him like he was some sort of furry wall. A furry wall? Anyway. Yeah, haven't you seen Get Him to the Greek? Never mind. Anyway, Silly. next. Next. Next thing. NATL. NA Tribes has been active as ever uh, recently. And um, so the, there's been some games recently. I mean, why don't you introduce these things? Um, you know, let's, let's, let's go for these games. Let me bring it up. Come on, internet. There we go. Right. Let's do it. So we've uh, we've had a couple games, um, and there's another one tonight. But we might as well pass it over to the resident expert on the panel, Simtex. The uh, round one has started, and I remember talking to you about these games before they kicked off, and you were going into this game against Vex pretty positive. Yeah, it was mainly that Vex was in a really really weak state. Um, like I know Tasty Ham streamed a match against uh, Triumvirate recently and there was there was actually a fight on stream between blitz and immune basically on a strategy choice and uh i know kegabit's gone as well he's he, i believe he's got a like a, a full-time job now that means that he can't play and we thought duck ranger was gonna be in brazil or something i don't know if he still is or when he's leaving but to my knowledge he's gonna be gone soon and we thought they were gonna play titan as well who hasn't played in months so they were gonna be in a pretty weak did titan spot, play he tweeted point. he was going nah he, he he didn't play there was like an install issue or something i think he said so like he couldn't actually play so they had like blitz off or something like that so going into it we actually felt really really strong we knew catabatic was gonna be a roll fest because that that's just what vex does on that map but permafrost we knew we had to win and we did and bella was really really close like it was a lot closer than the score i think we, we lost like four or five flags at our base because hot rod is just a beast and that's just what he does he just gets magic returns like every play 
So I mean, looking at the uh, the maps, it was you know you guys did go out in the lead with with permafrost, and then you know it sort of must must have fallen apart in uh, Katabak and Bala. So you you must have been feeling pretty good after the first map. Yeah, the first map there was well actually there was actually something funny that happened in the first map. The uh, the map was set to five caps in, instead of seven, so. We didn't know exactly what was going to happen at first, so uh, a lot of the mo momentum we had was lost um, simply because there was just a lot of downtime because Jim had to decide what to do. So I think Jim just gave us the option if we were okay with a five-two score, and we just took it because you don't you don't want to mess around with Vex. Like if you <laughs> if you leave a game versus Vex, like and you're you're on the winning side, you know you're you're going to take what you can get essentially. Yeah, gotcha. But, uh, but uh, trying to practice or prepare against Vex is really hard because no one really plays Vex like Vex. Like no one has a capper like Tasty Ham. Like they don't have that kind of killing power. Or I would say like Denial has that kind of killing power, but no other teams has that kind of intense offense that that they have. It didn't portray it like on stream on Catabatic, but they it felt like they never stopped attacking us on Cata. Like as soon as Tasty dies, he immediately starts a route every time. And between like the five O that they were doing, we don't know if they're doing like one capper, two capper, three capper. It's it's just so intimidating playing them. And Tasty also runs like completely unique routes to him. It's just there's nothing more stressful than trying to play defense against Vex on Catabatic. Well, I remember watching the uh, the finals and watching Tasty Ham's routes on uh, on Permafrost, which I thought were pretty amazing. And you know how did how did you deal with him on Permafrost? Uh, we were just getting a lot more spots. Um, I think that map is a, a little bit harder for offense at times. I think it's a pretty defendable base. It's really easy to get the gens up real quick. Also, our, our new um, Irish Hoff, Hootie Shoops, was doing surprisingly well. Big shout out to him. Like, We, we lost uh, Xanther and Clock Cat to, to real life issues. So, I mean, he just literally, like Bowie and Qualm, found him in pubs and he was stopping them every time. So we just invited him to our mumble and we really needed a Hoff. So, like, Big shout out to Hootie Shoops. Like he's been learning at such a remarkable rate on how to play Hoff. And he's got a good name. Yeah, Sh Hootie Shoops, such a good name. Too That's a really, really cool thing. Like picking up someone even from a pub just because you need someone. And then is is he going to be a permanent or at least for the foreseeable future? Is he going to be playing as a member? Uh, for Pro League, yeah, he's he's here to stay. I mean, Xanther recently got a got a new security job, and Clock Hat. I don't really know much about him. He shows up like once every two weeks. He's not really active, but if there's a game <laughs> going on and he's around, he plays. Like, well, that's that's really cool. So, uh, you, like you were saying, then then moving to Catabatic and and Bella things sort of turned around on you guys a little bit. But I mean, you managed to, I guess, hang on uh, on Bella. It wasn't wasn't a cap out. Tell us about that map. Um. I don't actually remember too much from that map. I just remember Blitz getting this insane strike grab going on. And then, like, they, their defense was actually pretty solid. Like, they, and their gens were up a lot. And that was, that really restricted our capper. And when you restrict the capper's routes, it's, it becomes so much easier to spot him. And Duck Ranger was just a beast. And so was Hot Rod. Like, their whole, their whole team just played so well. And we just failed to, like, convert caps that we got out. We were getting out a lot. We had, like, four or five caps that would just, that would just come home that we just lost because Vex's like crash is just insane. Like it's second to none. Cool. Well, you mean uh, it's the first first match of your group, um, and you did take a map, so that gives you some points on the board, right? So you guys uh, yeah. did did get some uh, some points on the scoreboard for that game. So definitely, you know, not the the that bad of a, an outcome for you guys. You know, definitely going up the strongest team. In your group now, you've got to uh, go up against uh, TBD in Texas over the coming weeks. How do you sort of uh, rate your chances against those guys? Oh, we're gonna win for sure. I don't know what the scores would be, but I feel completely confident against those teams. Strong words. I mean, Texas Militia did very well in the house league last uh, last season. Yeah, TXM is good. Like they're extremely coordinated. They don't have the highest player skills, but they make up for that in, in coordination. Like uh, their their offense will just always like meet at a new location at each time. And they'll just like all go together and just like hold hands. And when you got three chain guns, like you you can't really attack into that as LD. You can get lucky and occasionally get a kill, but they just they just time their clears really well. I, I don't really know their defense too well, but I know that they just they're just really really coordinated. I would say more so than any other team when it comes to timing their offense. 
Yeah, and uh, this might be a good time actually uh, to give a shout out to uh, to TXM. They they posted on Reddit recently. Um, TXM Hunted posted this that one of their teammates, uh, Redneck, is actually in hospital at the moment. Um, as far as I know, everything's uh, you know gone okay and he's all right. Um, but you know, our, our best wishes over there to Redneck, and hopefully he gets better and feels better uh, very very soon. But uh, yeah, they're going to be running apparently with a, uh, a different tag. Uh, they're going to run with RED tags to show their support um, of uh, of you know supporting that player, and I, I think that's really cool. Yeah, yeah I just want like, to chime in if you don't mind. Still, uh, yeah, Redneck ahead. is just like one of the like the sweetest guy like I've ever talked to. Like I've had the pleasure of talking to him several times. He's just He's just so nice, just all the time. He's just genuinely a really nice guy. I'm glad he's around. And yeah, I've, better. Never, I've never spoken to him personally. I've uh, seen like uh, he joined in on a cast with uh, David Bowie and uh, I think Halimar. And uh, yeah, he seems like a really great guy. And um, yeah, I think they said he's recovering from surgery uh, or something along those lines. So um, like Doc said, I think so far everything seems like he's he's cool. And yeah, just best of, best of luck to him and. Uh, the team as a whole. Yeah, I just want to talk a little bit more about TXM if that's if that's okay. Go, yeah, go for, for it. Yeah, TXM. I believe they've been around since like Tribes One, and at the time of TWL, like like nowadays, um, or actually like six months ago, they were at the bottom of the ladder, and they've just been sticking with it for so long. And I think it's just such a great story from them that they tried so hard, and eventually the like they no, I would say no other team tries harder than TXM. Like they they practice so much just all the time like there's they've even scrimmed at like two in the morning one time i heard like it's just insane how much they practice and they work so hard and i'm, I'm so glad they got the pro league like simply from an effort standpoint they deserve it so much so how would you rate their chances i mean their their first game is going to be tomorrow uh up against tbd uh, you know some pretty big names uh in in tbd there how do you rate them uh, against against those guys uh without looking at the maps so we've got um, permafrost catabatic and bella so the same same as you guys. Um, well, the thing about TBD is that they have a solid set of players, but I don't even know if they've scrimmed once together. But this was the um, the merger between INAP and Who Likes Wins. That's right. Yep. And TXM, they, they, you know, they they've got more coordination than anyone, and I would say that like everyone on To Be Decided is they're all good players. Like I don't think anyone would doubt that. But there's. They just the coordination's just not gonna be there. There'll be like standard things that everyone will follow, but it just won't be on a higher level, and, and that might hurt them. So uh, let's let's talk about that briefly. So I mean, you know, TBD have formed basically because uh, Who Likes Wins lost all of their European players, uh, basically because they didn't want to play a whole nother season of you know 3 a.m. matches. They couldn't really. That, that wasn't an option for for a lot of the EU guys. So they decided to pull out of uh, Who Likes Wins and. I don't know what happened to INAP, like Simtex, did they lose a bunch of players as well? Is that why the merger happened? Um, yes, I would say. Um, I was on there at one point, I left a while ago. Um, uh, Chicken and Waffles was on there, he left. He's like Planet Side 2 full-time now, pretty much. <laughs> so expect is gone, Naka's gone, and that's the majority of their team. So it made so, sense sorry, for them to... This is who likes wins? No, this is Internet. Oh, Internet, right, sorry. So INAP lost basically half of their starters, so it, it made a lot of sense for them to uh, merge. Yeah, so I mean, uh, I'd be interested to see how that one goes. You know, I'm always very keen to see, you know, things like the, the new guys into the league. You know, just like when uh, a new football team joins the Premier League, how, how are they really going to stack up against the Premier League guys? So that's going to be a really interesting match. Uh, versus, you know, what what is effectively a new team. So you've got, I guess what you were saying, Simtex, is really well-established, well-practiced team, you know, the slowly increased in their skill level uh, versus a team with some really big names, but perhaps not the experience. Um, be interesting to see how the teamwork goes. So that's going to be a Thursday at uh, 10 a.m. Uh, sorry, 10 p.m. If I could uh, just say one more thing. Go for it. Uh, TXM actually beat Ego on Permafrost not too long ago in, in a pretty close game. So I would actually give game one to TXM for sure because um, I would say the internet wouldn't give Ego too much problems, at least old internet, not the merged one. So I would say TXM is going to take take map one for sure. I don't know about the other maps, but TXM will at least win game one. You have I'm going to go ahead and say that TBD is going to end up second in that group. Second in the group. Well, let's bring those groups up. Yes. So little calls it to be. Oh, would you say Vex, Vex is going to come up? Ego. Yep. 
Really? You put that much faith in the uh, the Hoodlags wins and INAP merger? Uh, yeah, I do. They have some insanely good players on there, really. Um, and I think um, the lack of coordination is something that they can work on pretty quickly, probably, to get to a decent enough level. That's, uh, there are some insane players on that. They're definitely a, a strong-looking team. Obviously, no one's seen them you know, play competitively yet. Um, I mean, Simtex, what, what do you rate Ego's chances against TBD? It depends on how they would set up their team. There's, this is actually a very deep roster of like 13 people. Like uh, They got two cappers with IndyCore and Mog. Uh, Rincewind is one of the better LDs in the game right now, so that position would definitely be his. GST would be sniping. Uh, I know Swordfish has been focusing a lot on LDs, so, but like, I'm pretty sure Rincewind would still have that position. It's, it's, it's weird. I'm looking at it, and I'm not quite sure how they would set up their starting roster. Like, they have a lot of offense people. I mean, Slice, Aya, Janksor, Swordfish to a, a different extent, uh, Big Shaka, they, Nukem, they all play offense. I'm pretty sure Kevin does as well. Like, they have so many different ways that they could, they could play this. Like, but, and the, another thing, there's actually, like, no dead weight on that team. Like, I have no idea how they're gonna, uh, get a starting lineup out of that. And if I'm right, GST is the only non-North American on that team. Yeah, he's, uh, Russian. Yeah. I also believe he's living in Russia as well. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if but, he gets many games. But he's sniping anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, like back when I was on internet, he would wake up at like six or seven a.m. Like he would, he wouldn't miss a game really. Uh, Yods, have you got maybe anything to add at this point? Uh, I'm not too up to date on the NA side of things, so. Well, what was your impression of uh, you know the the European guys sort of bowing out of of who lags went? Uh, I don't blame them to be, to be honest. <laughs> Playing at five in the morning every night—it's not easy to do to keep up. Yeah, I read it. They posted that uh, it was, everything was well. They just didn't want to play early. They said they left on good terms. Yeah, that's what I heard as well. Basically, they just literally couldn't. You know, a lot of them just couldn't keep up that that uh, what's the word for it? schedule. Uh, it is pretty tough. But you know, I guess the the NA guys need to to make the time slots viable for NA and, and the EU is just sort of like a, a bonus. So the, the other match that happened was Puppy Kisses versus Triumvirate. Uh, it wasn't exactly, well, it, was, it wasn't that close, I suppose. Uh, nah, it did, did really. go three nil, um, but Sunstar looked pretty close. I, I haven't managed to catch any of these games. I've been hell busy with work and other stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, Simtex, did you actually manage to watch any of these matches? No, I heard it was a stomp, so I didn't actually watch it. So I do want to watch Sunstar simply to see how it uh, it flows. I haven't seen a competitive match on that in a very long time. It's a fantastic map. Yeah, Sunstar's actually not like it should be played more than it is. I think. So, I kept... oh, sorry, good. I was just going to say it was a it's a, a with with a good capper. It's a very fun map to play. Um, yeah, the the misconception about Sunstar is that it's sniper heaven, but. It's actually very easy for like a single player to completely deny the the high side kind of the map from the sentinel, and then just have your capper run all these really hidden rock routes that are that are really good. Um, so it's it's actually a very well balanced map, and tech isn't as overpowered as you would think it is. Like um, it's very difficult to keep that gen up since the gen room is so large. And cluster can be like really really strong, almost maybe even too strong in some style like. You, you have to jump on the clusters really fast or they can just start like really getting on top of you and getting uh, re-grabs going. But it is definitely a fun map to play. Um, yeah, I, would, I, I think I would say that it would take like three or four punts to just get it home. That's that's a real short distance. Yeah, uh, we tend to run like uh, two pathfinders just conking on that map just to stop that stuff. Um, and yeah. the sniper, obviously. So Thanks. I did want to ask, um, Simtex, maybe this is something you'd be uh, more familiar with. So tri Triumvirate, is that what I said? Hey, Triumvirate? I actually don't even know. I think Triumvirate. I think Triumvirate. That's it. I would say. Okay, so were they the expected winners for this game on Tuesday uh, against Puppy Kids? I would have. The Shazbots said that, definitely say they are. Yeah, like I'd have looked at the, those rosters beforehand, and to me, there's more big names on or well-known names to me on than on Puppy Kisses. But uh, yeah, they won pretty convincingly. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have guessed it would have been a blowout like this. Um, I know PK picked up two of Epi's, who is now disbanded. Um, I believe they, they picked up Alakaban and uh, Muji, the Huff, and both of them are very good players, so I'm surprised they went this way. They didn't play last night. I don't know if they just weren't available or whatnot, but I do want to say that Triumph for it is definitely um, a contender for the number two spot in the group. I don't know if they can get number one off of 
uh, denial, but Triumvirate definitely has potential to get number two in the group. Okay. Uh, yeah, the Puppy Kisses guys got a good shout out last week. I don't know if Yazo is watching tonight, but uh, <laughs> big call out for Hero Maki. We should get it back on the show. So the other the other match, uh, the final match in this round uh, is going to be you know maybe the biggest one of the lo- of the lot, and that's actually tonight, uh, which is uh, the newly rebranded Denial Esports uh, versus. Uh, ZFZ and let's have a look at the betting at the moment not a lot of betting uh, guys go get your shaz bucks on this game uh, currently 282 to 59 in favor of denial uh, who haven't changed their clan tags yet which I find um, interesting Simtex what do you think about this matchup well I talked to Cloud a little bit beforehand he said ZFZ is not in the best place right now from what I hear they're going to have to use um, Gwen Tu who is God, I'm blanking on his name, but that's a Smurf. He's um he's an, inf- an infamous lag capper. Like he warps a lot, so I don't know if that's gonna play into the game. But with how active 5150 is and how not active ZFC is, I would say 5150 has it in the bag. I don't see ZFC taking a map off them. Oh, he's gonna be a three 0 sweep, you reckon? Yeah, for sure. Fair enough. Uh, and that's gonna be casted tonight by I believe APC and uh, Fishsticks, who's joined us in the chat. Uh, big shout out to Fishstick, so that will definitely be covered tonight. Definitely tune in. I assume it's going to be on the official channel, uh, so right here. Hell yeah, it will. At the uh, 10 p.m. Uh, EST. So uh, definitely tune in for APC and Fishsticks covering this one. It should be a uh, fantastic match. Little or Yods, do you have anything to add on, on this game? Um, watch ZFZ wins just because um, Estebad whoops like crazy. Yeah, Esteban, that's who it was. That's what I was trying to think of. I don't see him yeah, on the roster. Gonna happen. He's he's uh, Gwen too. Yeah. Oh right, okay. Fair enough. So he's pretty much like unstoppable offense, just because he lags through halves, he lags away from sniper shots, he lags through everything. <laughs> I don't know if there's actually any rules against that, but if there is, I'm sure 5150 is gonna try and uh, use it. And, and it's pretty fair to, to do that. I mean, trying to snipe someone who's you know, just warping all over the places is bloody impossible. Or even body block him when he just teleports through you. <laughs> oh, that's the most frustrating thing. Uh, Helmer uh, is saying that 5150 lost to ZFZ on the on the ladder, so might not be as a blowout as you think. And they've uh, actually playing apparently Kensai uh, tonight as capping, and he might be uh, lagging a bit to America because he's a he's a Europe player. I or... mean, he likes to Europe as well. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, Big fan, Kenzo. Kenzo's cool. Check out his stream at Kenzo. Yes, yes. Yeah, Kenzo's cool. And I, I was really surprised when they picked up Kenzo just because uh, it, it seemed like an unlikely candidate to play um, on ZFC. But yeah, that's pretty cool they picked him up. There's actually um, a couple of new roster picks up in Denial. Um, I've been Sweetness. I've been like, an extremely old school capper who hasn't played in ages. I, I don't even know if he's going to be playing at all. I think he's just extreme backup. And then Sweetness is there who's just been a solid sniper for a while. He's a little rage inducive, but he's he's definitely good. So, I would say 51-50 wins unless they don't use their standard roster. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. I mean, this will sort of be the first game out of the blocks uh, for Denial Esports. And, yeah, I mean, it's, it's sort of going to paint a picture for them for the rest of the season, I think, uh, going up against uh, ZFZ, you know, one of the... Uh, I would still argue one of the stronger teams over there in, in NA at the moment. I mean, let's talk about the group then for just a second before we wrap up this section. Uh... You know, Simtex, who, who, I mean, Little's already said uh, TBD and Vex going through in Group 1. I think you called it to be Vex in yourselves. Uh, who would you give for Group 2? Uh, definitely Triumph for it and Denial, for sure. You don't think ZFC has a chance? No. Triumph for it, definitely more deserving of a spot over ZFC. If Triumph for it gets their heads right, then they will beat ZFC. There you go. Little, you got any opinion on that? Um, probably try and Brett in denial here. Um, I don't know. I like CFC just because of their roster, but but I think they're going to end up third in that group. Uh, I mean, CFC has a lot of talent on it, but they they just don't play like. Uh, yeah, exactly. The uh, the chat's turning into something at the moment. <laughs> Might be getting close so... to a time for a break, I think. It's doing something, yeah. yeah. Kids are kids have found their way into the candy job. Yeah. Uh, cool. Getting hyper. Any any final thoughts on on NATL from anyone before we move into a break? Uh, go and watch the match tonight. It should be good. And uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna try and stay up because I got up like 
stupidly early this morning for me. I missed this in the intro, actually, Stowe, but a uh, little bit of a celebration for you recently. Finished everything? Bit of a free man? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, no, I, I actually finished uni and now I'm back at home. I don't know if you can tell because the background's different, but yeah, I, I now back moved back from Nottingham to London because I finished my uni course, and uh, I'm pretty sure I've passed. So that's awesome, and now I'm going to have a bit more free time for a while until I try and get a job. So if anyone's hiring for audio engineer or live stream engineer or um, e video audio talk producer, show host full time or tribes caster maybe, you know, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, yeah, no, that, that that's really cool. Thanks yeah. for mentioning that. No, congratulations, man. It's a, it's Thanks, a big dude. step. So well done. Yeah, I got a new T-shirt too. Is that the one you're wearing? Yeah, yeah. That that's how you celebrated. You bought a T-shirt. Oh, I actually bought it before, but uh, oh, it took a while to be delivered. <laughs> Simtex, any final thoughts on an ATL before we take a break? I'm uh, just looking forward to the match tonight. I know I said it would be 3 0, but the games will definitely be good. Yep, it's uh, one that I will try to, to catch up on if I have some time. Hopefully, I'll download the VOD uh, and I'll watch it on my way to Wales on uh, on tomorrow evening. So that'll give me something. You're going to Wales? Yeah, uh, I won't get too into it, but basically, to renew my visa, I have to go to Wales. Uh, so, you know, GG. Uh, Wait, dude, Wales is nice. Where are you going? Uh, Cardiff. Oh, I've never been to Cardiff. No. You also Actually, said no, it's I close to Bristol. To I have, yeah, yeah. He, he told me I should ditch my wife and, and come and visit him in Bristol. Wait, he, oh, yeah, he does live in Bristol. I said I'll think about it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're going to move into a break, guys. Don't go anywhere. You've got a few minutes to go refresh your glasses, and uh, we'll be back with uh, the more general news segment of the show. Don't go anywhere. Uh, behind the blue plate.
there everyone, welcome back. It's uh, Behind the Blue Plate, and this is the second half of Behind the Blue Plate. Simtex mentioned something in the break uh, that he'd like to touch on uh, before we move into the general stuff. So yeah, throw it to you, Simtex. Yeah, I just want to talk about the house lead a little bit and like how many new teams there are in it. Like uh, Bread Machine, they're, they got about half new players and like half veterans. Uh, everyone in Group 2 is new, there's, there's no like uh, veterans in there. Uh, Ruckus is new. Uh, Flying Tractors is new. I can't believe BWA in Group 4 is still a team. I think they've been around since New Bloods 1, so shout out to Sid. Like, uh, Team Moth, I, I think uh, their only veteran on there is Eidmark. And they got like 11 other new people, Shazbot shenanigans, never heard of them. There's just like an insane amount of new players, and I'm pretty sure nobody has like ever heard of like 80% of them. So that's really cool to see a bunch of new people in the scene. And there's like a total of like 11 or 12 new teams. like. That just came up recently. I, that's just like so cool to me. There's a lot of new teams. Yeah, that that is really cool. I mean, you know, just how like, are you doing it? Yeah, I actually have no idea. I <laughs> I haven't actually looked into the rules in the house league. Like, I'm not doing this at all. This is um, this is just something I wanted to note. But I mean, what you note is like quite an interesting thing. There's just like this this continual growth uh, over there in the the NA scene, which is awesome. Yeah, for sure. Uh, shall we move on then? I guess, well, just that, that topic is a call out to the rest of uh, EU and what's left of, uh, God, what's what, of, uh, Oceana, um, Oceania. Um, just, you know, teams out there should be starting up and looking into playing for house leagues and stuff in EU and um, Oceania. Like, uh, it, it doesn't take too much to find seven people who will be willing to jump onto a server Um and practice and jump onto a mumble server that you don't have to pay for and you know get that there are plenty of things you can look up to see how to set up a, a whole team what positions you're looking to be do there are vods out there so people should be you know looking to even if you're a team who practices once a week or something like that then I, i'd love to see more stuff like that and need you to play in the house league for eu at the moment so do it yeah it'd be awesome yeah, to I see mean, some serious growth i don't even think we have enough to fill out to in yeah, we've we've been going backwards. We've been having people leaving. Yeah, that sucks. This is really cool, though. Yeah, NA's been like doing really well since uh, just NATL season one. It's been really doing well. Just gonna call it chaos. Gonna win everything. <laughs> just saying. I think you were responsible for their most recent logo, little. Uh, yes. Oh, is it the meerkats? The meerkats. Yeah. Oh my yes. god, that little. <laughs> Okay. I mean, Yods, um, in the, the house league within uh, EU, do you, do you know what that's looking like at the moment? Um, actually, I think there's a couple of new teams, so I think it's going to be bigger than it was last time. Well, that's good. That's, uh, that's really good. Like, uh, do we know what teams they are? I didn't even know there had been new teams. I know people well, have been forming uh, new teams times. with... Showtime's coming in. Um... Yeah, didn't GST 800 make Showtime and then left it? Oh, I don't he know if he it. made it, but he left it, yeah. He oh. did leave and create a new team called Lost in Nirvana. Okay. A bunch of pub stars, basically. I well, those that's... are basically the people who should who we need to get the pub stars. Yeah, I wasn't being negative or anything. No, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm agreeing with you. So we've got um, Adrenaline Multigaming. They're a new one to me. Um, Epic, Lost in Nirvana. Malversation, Method, and Showtime. So yeah, a lot of these I haven't heard of before. That might be because I don't really, I haven't kept up to date. So this Adrenaline Multi Gaming looks fairly new to me. I don't recognize many people on that list. Uh, Epic. Also don't recognize. Oh, many that's right. They're, they're a French team. Okay. Well, according to the maps, uh, the flags. There's not many. I don't see a single French flag there. What team is this? Epic. This is on the Game Shrine. Why do you even see this? Game so Shrine. if you go to Game Shrine Competitions Europe, uh, Season Two House League, you'll you'll see these guys. Uh, so it's Baby it's Doodle, I was looking at the Aviatopia, the Draft Builder, Mercury, the Black Panda, Ultra PP, Comet. Okay, here we go. Look, uh, Barefoot Man is posting right now. His House League team needs players. Post what you need and where people can do it. There's a Reddit thread there, I think. So go and sign up if you're in. I believe it's EU. He's talking about. Um, if not, then NA. But it will say on that, that post, so cool. Scared Hitless, who are a relatively new team, I think. Um, a month or two old, I'd, I'd guess. 
need to, actually I, th I think that's American team yeah that's uh, uh, yeah you just said NA not EU um, so yeah go and sign up and increase the amount of tribes teams you can be a pub star you can be someone who just thinks you're good in pubs try that it's uh, I'm being told by chat that AMG is a, uh, a French team and indeed there's uh, quite a lot of French flags and German flags uh, on that one those guys don't my laptop's out. about to die I need to go get my charger all right no worries I will uh, I will update your picture on the cam um, so yeah, Lost in the Mind, definitely GST's new team, uh, Mulversation, okay, Arm Penguin, 9 watts, yeah, there's some dudes on this one, Nitro Dust. Mulversation's been around for a little while, Yeah, not I, too long. I haven't, I haven't casted them, but I definitely recognize a lot of the people there. And of course, Showtime, uh, oh wow, yeah, I remember these guys, yeah, plenty of names on that team, Norjan, Vixor, Hara, Vice Lord, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good roster actually. So, well, we'll, uh, we'll see... How that goes? Um, we we scrimmed Malversion or Malversation or whatever a while ago. They're actually pretty good. Like they, for a new team, they do alright. Simtex is back. Uh, so yeah, what's next though? Sorry, people bothering me. Hang on. Okay, so up next we have. Uh... <laughs> oh. You're such a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you say I'll update your picture and I didn't know what you were quite going for. <laughs> oh man. I told him Look I was going to do that. <laughs> oh, oh man. My God. I totally yes. forgot about that. Oh man. <laughs> Shout out to Chicken and Waffles for asking me to do that. That, that was uh, that was a oh. highlight from our um, our previous episode with Simtex. <laughs> yeah. Was I on that one? I think you I were think actually. I got yeah. weird. Yeah. Yeah. The, the um, call-ins got a bit crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Lazy just said I got confused and thought it was Chatterbait. <laughs> Okay, so moving on, we have right uh, 0004's 10,000th cap, which was made into a cool event. Apparently, he contacted APC um, because he was reaching his 10,000th cap, and he's the person who's got the most caps um, on the leaderboards in the game, and I believe he would have found that out through wilderzone.org, um, that, that he was the most, I, I think. I was going to say, like, I saw him on the top of the classes uh, thing over on Wilderzone. I'm just going to bring that up very quickly. Uh, so, yeah. I'd never heard of this guy before, I'll be honest. Uh, but he has played 64 days in a Pathfinder. Oof. Is this a, like, 96% Pathfinder guy? Uh, we can look at that, too. Oh, God, that website. 86.8%. Uh, oh, yeah, it's crazy, but I'm thinking of a fucking 97% right there. <laughs> Either yeah, way, that's, uh... Uh, that's a lot of time played. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And uh, yeah, so we contacted APC and said, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'd like to make a thing of this. And they did a, uh, a cool kind of stream where they made a big cap out of the last one. And it was uh, pretty funny to watch. So, you know, that kind of stuff's really cool. And APC basically said, um, if you've got milestones that you're reaching and you want to make a you know a thing on the stream, the stream's there to do fun stuff like that. And they can do it in streamers' times if you want to contact them. And most of them would be completely happy to do that. So that was, that was a kind of cool thing. Yep. I mean, any other comments on that? Did anyone watch the stream? Uh, I watched most of it, yeah. How was it? Is uh, Cass like a, an actual team or...? Apparently. Uh, let's see if we can click on their... Uh, place yeah, go tag. on, go to, go to wilson.org. Exactly. <laughs> you can have a section on it on, well, on the show, just like... And here's a section where we visit Wilderson. There are... I can see six players currently on Cass. Uh, so maybe they need duck. a seventh player. I know Toilet Duck. That's a brand of, uh, you know. I'm sure I've seen him on the. On the no, it's, it's a cleaning thing. thing. You're, you're thinking of a cleaning product, dog. But, <laughs> but he's a tribes player. <laughs> you're so funny. Toilet dog. Um, no, but cats is definitely a thing. I don't actually think it's a. An I think it's, team, it seems to be like a pub team. That's what the chat's Yeah, saying. I think they have a channel around here in the mumble somewhere. There was a post on the Hyra's website uh, explaining a little, a little bit of a bio about it. It's like Cass is apparently like a like a Tribes One team or something. From they they claim to be the number one team in Tribes Renegades mod. Oh, that's right. I do remember that something about that. Clan Alpha Saber is the actual name. So here we go. I don't uh, I don't know nothing about Tribes One. So started off as blah blah blah. Uh, formed and we became the number one team in Renegades. Uh, from here, I developed my passion for capping. Stuff, 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 stuff. Yeah, uh, I was never a big fan of Renegades, to be honest. Do you guys have? Did anyone play Tribes One here? Nope. Nope. Okay. Renegades was this crazy mod uh, with really crazy weapons. It was very, very different. Um, 
Yeah, it wasn't my thing. It, it felt like a completely different game. Who uh, who made it? It wasn't um, oh, community Sierra, was it? No, no, no. It was like a mod. A... Like it was oh, a it was community an actual mod. mod. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I see. Yeah, Renegades and Shifter were the two be- biggest ones. If I got speed, which racket. was the one where you had uh, like a hook shot thing, like grapple. That was oh, vengeance. Was vengeance. Yeah, vengeance. Yeah, that that yeah. was a that looks game. really fun. Tribes Vengeance. Yeah. Well, it was a different game, and it was the same series, though, right? Yeah, but like Shifter and Renegades were just mods of Tribes One. Right. Okay. Right, yeah. Right. So they used the Tribes One engine, and um, I saw it as one. Because uh, okay. tri- Tribes One was very scriptable. But anyway, moving on. What's next? So uh, the NA Tribes New Bloods workshops and pugs are starting up again, which is really cool stuff to hear. Get more people into that. If you're a pub player, if you're a pug player who maybe wants to uh, improve a bit more there is the new bloods workshop where you can show up and not feel embarrassed that you don't know how to run a route or you don't know how to snipe or do whatever um they're going to be this weekend on may 17th and 18th and there is a link that hopefully doc can post in the chat for me now because i'm holding down push talk and i can't do it myself okay I'll um do that. thank you doc and yeah basically that's just um really good for those kind of people you'll have people there who are mentoring you um and you know teach you the ins and outs of their respective roles um and this is really cool stuff like you should uh definitely good for people who are looking to jump into the scene i think we need capping ones to be done in eu at the moment i don't know about america but every time it's like can we do a pug no there's no one who wants to cap <laughs> and then you kind of have to sacrifice and go for someone it, who it, doesn't it's really kind want of similar cap. on occasion sometimes yeah. like uh, on odd hours uh we'll have trouble getting a capper so it looks like you have to register for this one uh, register, okay. apply for what positions you're interested in, uh, sign up for the times you can show up, and that's kind of it. Uh, I'd be interested to know who they've got uh, to to sort of run some of these workshops. I know, you know, a lot of is it epidemic or egocentric typically do this a lot. Ego, I think. Yeah, both of them have done it. Yeah. Oh okay. no, no, Epi did the the weird team draft thing. Right. Yep. Um, but, you know, another another good thing uh, that's that's coming out of NA, like they they do this. Uh, a lot. In fact, the uh, high res in this article uh, gives a bit of a call out to EU, uh, saying if anybody in EU wants to help putting this together, um, he'd be more than happy to run uh, one of these over over on the side of the pond as well. Yeah, and I think that's actually something that we, uh, you know, really could benefit from having more people, uh, maybe knowing how to cap in particular, maybe even snipe as well. Little would be that be something you're interested in doing, teaching people to snipe better. Yeah, um, I think the the whole idea of doing those workshops is is great. We should at least try it out. Like we've done New Bloods Pugs, and it hasn't been very successful because we. I really think they had some success people. in it. I think they had some well, success. Well, we usually at least. had like three or four. No, usually no, like I three assume. people on every team that were like good players. Oh, I see what you roles. mean. Um, I, I think I've seen them fill out whole things. They had some success for a little while, but a yeah, it was a long time ago they'd fill out. But then the latest couple of times we've been doing it, it's not been working at all. Well, maybe we should try and get something set up with a few people. We should um, definitely try a workshop though, because that doesn't actually require like seven new people on each team doing different roles, you know. And that gives yeah, something yeah. that the good guys can do. You know, they can they can teach the new dudes what's going on. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, I Cookie Monster saying he'd love New Bullet Pugs to come back. Cookie Monster is always in the chat, but he's not on the mumble. Never comes and speaks to people in the EU mumble because he doesn't have a mic or something like that. Man, calling him out, though, dude. Yeah, I'm calling him out, man. I always see him. I talk to him all the time, but he's never in. He's from EU and he's never in the mumble. It's these the these are the people who need to come in and play a bit more. But he does think, watch man. this show regularly, so he's a good guy. He is in every single Tribes Ascend stream. Every time I show up, he's there. So. Cool guy. Just needs to show up a bit more for actually, you know, coming along, playing some games, Cookie. Do it. Fair enough. Uh, Yods, what's your thoughts on the uh, the new blood pugs, and do you think something like that is something we should see more of in Europe? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we uh, did, um, like, a workshop not too long ago, I think it was, around the same time as the first NA ones, but uh, it, it definitely could have been more structured, I think. Like, I, I saw, um, I think it was Rincewind's uh, LD, um, workshop is really really well structured and stuff so would you consider doing a workshop for LD yep I did before but uh, yeah I'll structure it a lot better this time sure so I mean there we go we've got Little doing Sniper you doing LD we're, we're halfway there and uh, yep. I would like to call out the people that do get involved with this to record it 
um, you know, for posterity, because you know th this is something that people can go back and rewatch, and and guys that weren't able to show up can can go and, and check out what went on. Uh, I and, remember uh, Rincewind did so. this, and he did it very well, and that, that's why I'd encourage everyone to get get on that recording bandwagon. I mean, Small Kiwi did this back in the day. Um, he did. He did capping tutorials. Yeah, this. I remember that. He would do it like every like Thursday or Friday or something. Yeah, and uh, I think that's really useful for people. Just even if it's some basic roots or basic concepts of playing LD or offense or just outlining the general um, roles and, um, you know, low darts that they have to do, how they, how the, a rough idea of how they're meant to communicate. And I think that breaks down a lot of the walls that people see in going to pug because a lot of people are, I think, maybe look at pugging and say, oh, I don't want people to get angry at me. I don't want people, like, maybe I'm a bit shy. I don't want people to have to explain to me what I have to do. So I think this kind of stuff will break down the walls maybe a bit easier. And, you know, it's it's those people who are interested in um, watching streams and being showing up for behind blue plate or, you know, casts and then actually playing and getting involved themselves because it is... Pugging, I would say, is the most fun way of playing tribes. Even, I'd say it's more fun playing, like, a... Uh, I, I don't know, actually. I haven't played much on the team, but I think it's the most fun I've had playing Tribes. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting having Taylor on last week and giving her perspective on what it's like for a new player to, to take that leap and take that jump into to playing Pugs. So and maybe things like workshops are a good stepping stone toward that. You you get in the, you know, imagine going to a workshop and you, you're feeling good about your role and stuff, and then it's just a natural thing. Well, how about we go and play a game? And it's you don't use the word Pug, but it really is. And all of a sudden, there you are. So, yeah, it's, it's good stuff, and I'm glad to see the NA guys uh, picking this up and, and getting people involved, particularly, you know, with the, the surge of popularity they're seeing in terms of stuff like the House League uh, getting more and more uh, teams in there. So, yeah, it's just good stuff to, to build the community. Good work, APC. Yeah, good work well. to everyone involved in that. Yeah. Shall we move on? Yes, we so uh, probably move on. Quick topic here is just uh, the NA Tribes has uh, had a mumble update to sort things out. Uh, yep. Actually, EU had an update uh, to clean up a load of stuff recently, but I think the NA mumble has officially moved now. Yeah, you got to go and update your your things, go and update your servers and all that kind of stuff. I don't know why they had to move, but they did. So anybody that wasn't aware of that, be aware. If you're logging on and you think NA Tribes uh, mumble has gone, then it hasn't. Actually, I'll need to do that because I'm done that. I, I haven't been on in a while. Can we can we campaign for like moving the AFK channel back into the lobby? Is that a thing we can do here? What in the EU? Like, yes. what what's the uh, big issue? It just be nicer there. I liked it. I oh, so it. have just an AFK channel in the uh, under the lobby or? G Reaper says no, Lil. Oh, Grethland, I see. Groper right. is bad. <laughs> And also the the auto AFK no, no gripper no. <laughs> Yod Zanklai, uh, what's your opinion on auto AFK on the EU mumble? To be honest, uh, if I'm AFK, it doesn't make a difference. <laughs> Let it be anywhere. I want to be in my nest channel though. I don't want to be in the AFK channel. <laughs> I mean, if you have space issues, like if you hit the cap on your mumble server, it could be a problem. But if you're never near that, then it's but I mean, oh, whatever. You're still in the mumble. EU triumphs is dead. Oh, bang! I hey, did, yeah, I, today we had two pugs going at the same time. That's the first I for a while. That. I see that happening a lot recently. Hey, we had three pugs going a couple of weeks ago. Well, there you go. So stop, stop. You know, stop having a go. Stop. 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 I I have some breaking news. <laughs> breaking. News. Can I break the breaking news? Dude, break it like an egg into an omelette. Uh, don't. I don't have that much. You gotta but, crack it first. Be gotta crack it. Crack it and then. I have been contacted by Night Shaper from The Art of Warfare uh, saying that he would like me to make the announcement to all the members of the TAW EU tournament to email nightshaper at tor.net as well as getting a hold of myself in hash TAW on Tribal War. Uh, so I don't know what it's about and I'll put this into the uh, mum... Uh, not I got mumble. it. Thanks though. Nightshaper at tor.net and uh, yeah, TAW.net, not the art thing. of warfare.net yeah um also if you'd like i can step on and personally apologize about the events oh, actually i should probably shouldn't read that out i probably should read it first uh hang on <laughs> <laughs> come on doc i'm uh you know, this is i'm not used to breaking news this is cool i like this yeah um, dude it's totally breaking we we may have night shaper coming on during the call-in section to give us 
some updates about what's happening with that tournament. That would be very, very cool. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll get back to that in, in the call okay. section, I suppose. So I'm what... pretty sure TAW is like uh, an army-based gaming clan. Yeah, they do lots of stuff. Uh, I remember yeah. when they first sort of started pimping themselves out as moving into tribes. Um, yeah, they, they were in a lot of different games. Yeah, I like, yeah. I think the only thing they need to do to make this work a lot better is just get an ISA channel. Well, he's just we said, hash TAW on Tribal War. That's where you should oh, be. Tribal War. <laughs> yeah, but the EU scene is on QuakeNet, though, so that's the problem. Like... Well, we'll try to get him to call in, and you can tell that to his mumble face. Yeah. <laughs> his mumble face. <laughs> Alright, what have we got left, Stu? Well, okay, we, were, so... we were talking about, let's do the, the Drunken Jedi thing. Uh, yeah, speaking on... I, I like that. That's a good segue. Um, so speaking about, you know, um, uh, workshops and tutorials and things like that, Drunken Jedi has been putting a lot of guides up to uh, reddit.com slash r slash tribes the uh, Reddit scene for tribes and uh, basically outlining player um, loadouts and roles, basically just text-based stuff, which is interesting seeing as, he, as he's quit the game recently. Did he? Um, yeah, I think he uninstalled it. He's waiting for a new PC. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, uh, there's uh, quite a lot of roles there going on. Uh, guides. Yeah, like, I, I, you know, anyone... I mean, Drunken Jedi is one of those guys that's got a rather interesting uh, reputation within the scene. Um, <laughs> that's a very diplomatic way to say it right but I mean you can't deny the work that he's putting into putting these guides together and agree or disagree they are a good introduction um, certainly to someone who hasn't got the time to play with them themselves and, and really figure them out you know it does give you good information uh, about what each of the perks do what it, you know what are reasonable loadouts uh, you know whether you want to use them in competitive environment or not it's certainly going to take you from I don't know anything to now I've got a decent grasp on what's going on. So, you know, I just want to give him a shout out to what is a lot of good work. And, you know, I don't, don't think anyone will argue with that. I think the um, the only worthwhile thing to come out of all those those posts is uh, Stowaway's comment straight from the horse's mouth. <laughs> on, uh, and it, it's going to capping. <laughs> hey, man. That well, was said in... in you know in in, in in jest in jest no like um i haven't read too many of the things because i know everything about tribes obviously i'm like the best player of you um but yeah like people seem to enjoy them and it's definitely good at least for you know people entering the pug scene kind of pit or you know um it might not be useful to someone who's uh been pugging for a while or is involved in the competitive scene as much but um yeah i think that it's definitely good for those kind of people who need to learn about the stuff and people seem to appreciate them so that's you know, I ain't got nothing to argue with that. Yods, what do you think of Drunken Jedi's output? I think it's good work, actually. Um, I, I didn't, especially about the perks, because when I first started playing, I didn't know how awesome Quick Draw was until I was like level 20. So it, it can help a lot of new players. I think um, the biggest thing is actually getting it to people who are, who are not on Reddit. A lot of people who play the game don't visit Reddit. So that was going to be sort of the main takeaway I wanted to put uh, on all of this. And this goes straight out to Drunken Jedi, who I believe is watching under a pseudonym. Uh, that you know, you need to get this somewhere that's more uh, static, because Reddit stuff disappears. Like if you don't go look up your submits on Reddit, you aren't going to find the stuff. So talk to APC, talk to the guys at World of Zone, um, and you know, get this on a real website rather than just in Reddit threads, because otherwise you're just going to, you know, it's not going to reach as many people as it potentially could reach. Uh, and you know, yeah, go on, look. Sorry. No, just saying, to be fair, um, all these things are in r slash shazas, uh, which is not exactly the most popular subreddit in the world. So they're going to be there, I imagine, for a while. You're saying people don't post the r shazas? Um, I don't, you know, I don't think it's very popular. Well, just uh... Just a whim. Drun well, I mean, Drunken has confirmed is... in chat that he's going to get on World Design, so that's good. Glad to hear, yeah. Drunken. Good stuff. I, I feel like even though, you know, I mean, World Zone is definitely a good place to have it. They have tutor tutorials and some videos posted up there. But I feel like that's a, you know, there's a much smaller player base and uh, visitor base and even Reddit. It's difficult to get that place where a load of pub players are. But you can link um, to it easily. You can tell people, go to World yeah, Zone sure. and go check it out. You know, Sure. But I think one place where you could reach the most players, and I think is the, the biggest centralization of reaching public tribes players, is the Tribes of Zen Facebook page. 
Right. So yep. I would uh, say, I mean, it, and it, it proves in if a link is posted to there by, I think APC runs it, then we get an increase of 50 or 60 viewers sometimes just from having that. And, you know, uh, uh, one one example is a montage I posted there and was relinked to the Facebook that and got a load more than my previous ones. So that's really that's interesting definitely... comments as well. Yeah, definitely. I, I got told some <laughs> horrible things. Um, that was pretty funny. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, I think that is the central hub of where you'll reach most public tribes players. And I think contacting APC and maybe getting all of the... I, Drunken Jedi, this is what I'm saying. I'm, I'm reaching a point here. Um, is get all of those put into one document, maybe on the World's Zone page, and have it, here's a list of this, then paragraph, then here's a list of this, get that all done, and then try and get post to APC and get it to be posted as one link to the Tribes Ascend thing, saying this is a great set of tutorials for you know people who want to learn about how to use things properly, and get it all done like that. And um, I think that's the best way you can reach it, because obviously they don't want to keep posting them individually, I think that's probably the best way to go and reach the most people. Agreed. Cool. And that's my point. There you go. Professor Stowaway, dropping the knowledge bombs. Dropping the internet bombs. Cool. And knowing exactly what I'm talking about. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's cool. Where are we up to? I think we're getting near the end of the car. We're just sort of jumping around a little bit. Um... What do you want to go do next, though? Just I to... wanted to talk about quickly. Um, yes. This is the... Uh, I just wanted to talk about this. It's not something I've ever been involved in, but I think it's really cool. Um, shouting out to G Reaper, who th recently had to shut down the last Euro Tribe 1 base slash LT server. Um, so that's the last one on, on Tribes 1, uh, for in at EU. least Europe, yeah. for EU. Um, and that was hosted by G Reaper. And his, I've, I'm reading out of a comment here now. His efforts have basically kept the scene, pickup scene in, in Europe alive from 2006 to 2009 or 10. And if there is ever a god in tribe, it is G Reaper of No Mercy fame. So rest in peace, Shazbot.eu number one. I yeah. think that's uh, a legacy dying there. I'm, it's a shame that something like that has to get shut down. I wouldn't think it'd take that much resources, to be honest. But, yeah, I, I don't know what the reason is or whatever. Yeah. Maybe it just people weren't frequenting it anymore, but I think that's a shame. Tribes 1. Um, it, it's so cool that a game from, what, 1998 is still was still uh, being played um, with, with people and had an active scene. So, just no longer used at all. There you go. So, that is a shame. But, you know, congrats to anyone who enjoyed themselves in that. Simtex, do you know if there's any T1 going on in NA? I had no idea. I recently played some Tribes 2, but uh, I haven't touched Tribes 1 at all. We should organize a T1 tournament, Doc. We should I do would it. do that. I would totally oh, do that. You play I would just have to spend an entire weekend getting all my scripts back together. Um, oh, really? You have to run a bunch of scripts? Well, you have to. Like, you need your ski.cs, you need your favorite CS, you need all this stuff. Um, because the game out of the box is a little bit raw. Wow. That's a... Uh, is well, it can wildly you even run it on modern PCs easily? I assume yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. people do. You can. It's uh, it's pretty pretty easy to do. I think even I'm sure I know it's easy to do because you can do it. Um, I I recently even saw that they released a new patch, uh, for it. I believe, or maybe I'm thinking of a different game. But I'm sure I saw a Tribes One patch come out recently where they that fixed was a bunch probably of... Modern Warfare Three. No, jeez, no. <laughs> no, it was because they they mentioned Happy Flag and all this kind of stuff. So uh, there was a new patch released for. You know, tribes one, variety X. I can't remember which. Uh, yeah, speed speed Ractra uh, says 1.41 uh, fixes some hacks that were happening in sort of like the T1 thing. So I'd be totally up for getting that, uh, you know, up and running. Maybe we could do. Ooh, I wonder if Yuzo would be interested in doing a a T1 oh, sucker. Oh, I just thought about something. Go on. Oh, I just thought about something. I just thought about something. I'm gonna talk to you. Are you gonna share it? No, I'll, I'll wait. Oh, you're just gonna cock tease the entire viewership. No, because it's not something we talked about. Like, uh, Fair enough, okay, season. fine. It's okay, it's, it's good, it's good. Yazo says no. <laughs> Yazo says no. Well, Yazo, I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't complain at him for running it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yazo, I want you to take your money and create <laughs> and put a it tribe's to a, tournament. A different game that you don't play. Exactly. That, that's your duty. <laughs> <laughs> Syrian the said spill the beans you prick that's it man that's what you get teasing them dude I just I'm sorry look it'll be cool 
All right. Uh, do we have anything left before we get into like final pieces? Oh, uh, we got the Frag Nation tournament. Uh, oh yeah, I keep pimping that. Uh, sign up, damn it! I'm gonna hit this every week at you guys. This is important. Uh, where is it? There we go. If it's still two teams, I'm gonna be upset. It's still two teams. God damn it! Uh, try, try to convince me. Try to sell me to try and join the stock because I don't like. I think I could see for everyone. Like, there's a money tournament going on right now. We, like, there's a ladder going on as well. Like, we don't really have time for something else. Like, like honestly, try and sell me on why I should do this. I'm... Okay, so instead of practicing with scrims, practice with games for this. Yeah, that could work. So I think um, what they said when they announced this was that these these ladder rankings were going to be used for a tournament. Like that was the the point of the the ladder. I could be wrong. I guess. I think I that's possible. That. We had shiny thigh on. He he may have said that. I don't recall. But the, the, the yeah. reason the reason that we want people to sign up for this, and where is the damn thing? Um, Fragnation, uh, da, 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 where is it? It's like an about, about Fragnation. God damn it. I can't find it. There's this bit on this website where it shows you how many people are looking. It's right at the bottom, just look at the it's very at the bottom. bottom. There's almost a thousand. Yeah, there it is. 124,000 accounts registered, and uh, 198,000 hits today, 277,000 hits yesterday. There is a lot of people looking at this website, and if Tribes become something popular on here, it will be like this black hole of people coming into the game, because they're like, oh, look, a lot of people are playing this on this site that I like to, uh, like to frequent, and I just see it as a real opportunity uh, to grow uh, the communities. So... I don't know. That, that's that's why I think it's cool, because if it does take off, I think there's a real opportunity here uh, for it to be exposed to many more people um, than it would be anywhere else. I mean, yeah, that that's why, because it, it's an opportunity to get exposure to a lot of non-tribes playing people. Yeah, like, I, would, I, think, I would agree with that. Like, I see your point on it. I just don't think that you could honestly get like a majority of the NA tribes teams on there. I don't know if it's just like an NA section or to you as well. But... It's NA only at the moment. But I mean, all those teams when you signing up as house league stuff, you're not competing for a money tournament anyway. And I just think it's important, like people looking or sites looking into putting things up for this. The more sites that are out there, maybe it's a bit of a pain because it's not a prize pool or anything. But it's just more playing tribes, to be honest. Um, but I want to echo something Clout just said in chat. I mean, NATL, then you get the ladder, then Frag Nation. That's 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 what so team much. does Clout play for? Oh, uh, sorry, what? ZFC. ZFC. He plays for he, ZFC. He, he recently quit, though, due to lag like, issues. Okay, well, ZFC, let's take an example. I'm not suggesting they should now go and play on that. I'm not I, I think I mentioned this last time. This is, obviously, they're going to be playing a lot of stuff. They uh, are focused a lot on being the top of NATL right now, or, you know, competing for the top spot on it. So, no, I don't think that it would be worth their time to go and do that. Whereas, I think that now, especially with more teams joining the NA, scene i think it's um it, it is really important and it just gives you more opportunities to be, do well in a ladder if a lot of those house teams join well in now they can possibly you know move uh, like you know actually get a lot higher than they would in playing the house league of natl or something like that it's good practice to play against teams that are maybe a bit lower down so i think those are the people that should look into joining and even if you play like i said once one game for that every two weeks or whatever how long it takes it would obviously depend on the tournament but oh it's a ladder right so you know you, they're generally pretty easy to yeah, set up when you want to play it's not like you have to play on this day or it's it it's like you know you can generally work it out between the teams so yeah i i think those are the kind of teams that maybe should be joining so if you're you know not your zfc's your uh denial esports your whatever then i think those are the people you should be looking at I think it's just kind of badly marketed, honestly. Like, um, they should have made it a tournament to begin with, you know, something that gets people interested in it. When you just open up a ladder and you're like, oh, please sign up for this, there's nothing There's no, nothing involved for you unless, except, like, e-fame, um, nobody's going to join. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and, you know, ESL at least got some traction by, by doing exactly that, running their cups and all that sort of stuff. People did sign up for that. Um, but that was only possible because there was no money tournaments going on. But th there's still um, very few money tournaments going on. Like NATL is well, the ESL biggest. Well, ESL was tournament. a money tournament. 
I want yeah. yeah, ESL. Oh, oh sorry. Invitation I thought you meant like the. I thought you were talking about like the the Winter Cups. Well, there was that as well. But I'm just saying that they did have a money tournament. They did. They did have one. But based my, on the success of is, the cups. My my point is is there's very few. Look, if you're playing tribes looking for money tournaments, you're not likely to do very well. Even if you're a, like you know not likely to you know make a lot of money. It's always great for that, but. You know, yeah, I've it's, said it's it not the, uh, necessarily the amount. It's just the fact that it, it's it's not pride, but it's like motivation, pr pr prestige. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're playing for like, something on the line. I understand that. Yeah, yeah and, and people will know that th this is where it actually matters. And I don't think that Fragnation will be able to do that with like a free tournament or just like a random ladder. I mean, well, okay, but I still think people should sign up and play on it if they have the ability yeah, like, to. I, I understand that I'm. <laughs> no, I, I I get it from your perspective totally. But there, I definitely think there are teams out there, not necessarily you know, your, your, like I said, your ZFCs and your denial and whatever, um, that that have the space to play on that. So yes, that that's my point. Play it if you can. All right. Well, let's let's not harp on it. We just wanted to again bring it up, make people aware of it, because every time I bring this up, you know, even people on the panel are like, what? I didn't know of this. So I just want to try and give it as much exposure as possible. Yes. Sorry for being negative on that. No, that's no, cool, no. man. Yeah, totally I, I still wanted to bring up the point. Uh, yeah, I totally get the point. Like people are now. I mean, like we said earlier, NATL's now started. There's a game tonight, which you should watch. Um, but yeah, I, I I totally get like not being able to have the time. People have lives and stuff. All right. Well, let's uh, move. I think there's one topic left, if I'm not mistaken, which is Shrek's video. Yeah. Sure. I just take it away. wanted to mention this because I watched it and it was awesome. Uh, you know, that was the 60 FPS one, right? The 60 FPS one went for about eight minutes. Uh, yeah, go check it out. I do. I have the link. I probably did something dumb and didn't even put. No, the, the link is there. Link is there. Cool. Uh, go check it out. Like, I mean, I know there's a lot of montages going around these days, um, but this one I thought was particularly cool. Um, the amount of like the guy just doesn't miss. Like with that graphics level setting he's got. He would be killing people and I couldn't even see them. I couldn't see what he was aiming at. I just saw the shot go out and the dude died. Like the, the little kill window popped up. It was uh, it was pretty epic and I thought it was worth a mention. What do you think, Stone? I actually haven't been able to... I'm watching a bit of it now. I haven't been able to watch it because when I first started playing it, it wouldn't play for some reason. Like, yeah, I don't know why I didn't just put it on bloody YouTube. Maybe YouTube doesn't do 60 Well, frame. YouTube... No, it doesn't do 60 oh, okay, so It's limited why. to 20, 29 point something, I think. Right, okay. Um... So yeah, that's that's what's limited to. Uh, I'm actually a big fan of the 60 FPS uh, montage. It's so smooth. It looks so great. Um, I just haven't been able to watch it up to this point. Little, you're a sniper. Did you get to check out his video? Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think especially the 60 FPS thing is really cool. There's some great shots in there as well, and some like good long clips. And the editing is just superb. Some of the like sound sound effects he's put in as well. I love the like quake the, the, sounds. The quake sounds. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he put quick sounds in it. Yeah, about yeah. halfway through, he's like using a chain on someone, and it's doing that like little popping sound that you get when you uh, do damage. That little. No more the Dude. boom boom. Oh well, yeah, yeah. The one I th I'm thinking of like, oh, tribes does that. <laughs> 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 trying to think what the game. <laughs> oh, shut up. GG stuff. Yeah, but that's. Uh... It's one of the best montages. His his last montage was great as well. The yeah, his first one. When it comes very to good. editing. Sorry, yes? Oh, uh... His first one, too, I was just mentioning, was, uh, really good. Cool. So, yeah, so that was, uh, very That's great. Go check it out. That's a link to tunnelvision.sign9.de. It's, you have to copy and paste it, but yeah, that's the, that's the link to it. Doc did also post it. I did post it. But that's right. Yeah, I think post people didn't notice that that's what we're linking to, because it's oh. different sites to YouTube or whatever. I see. Cool. So, uh, that pretty much covers it for, you know, planned content we've got. Uh, so I'll throw up the call-ins uh, thing. Do we want to do... Now, like I said to Taylor, we don't have any submissions for the Blue Plate Challenge this week. So no Blue Plate Challenge this week, uh, or at least no nothing to show. Uh, shall we do uh, montages... Or not montages. Do we do plays of the week before or after call-ins, though? Because I do have I some call-ins lined up. While we wait. Oh, okay. If yeah. we've got someone, then... Uh, uh, shall I do Blue Plate Challenge at the end? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll call cool. that out at the end. Uh, so the first one I'm going to bring is Night Shaper. So this is the guy from... Uh, the Art of Warfare. He's going to come in and give us a little uh, mention about what's going on with the Art of Warfare tournament. Nightshaper, are you there? Yes, I am. How are you doing? Doing really well, mate. So, uh, yeah, thanks for coming on. Uh, it's great to have somebody... Ooh, where did everything go? Sorry. Uh, it's great to have somebody... God damn it. Uh, on to uh, give us some background on, on what's going on with the tournament. So, yeah, fill us in. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what's part of it is. I haven't quite as available as... 
I would have liked to be. Uh, essentially, what it boils down is to is there's a bit of a command shift in the European section of law, and I guess there's just been a bit of miscommunication as to what's happening, as well as just neglect in some respects. So we're trying to get this sorted out and dealt with ASAP. I actually wasn't aware of the situation because of what was happening with my personal life, so I'm hoping we're able to get this sorted out and fixed ASAP and try and recover this for everyone else. So what? So you mentioned to me earlier in IRC that people should get in contact with you. Like, what? What are the next steps? Like, what are you actually going to do? Uh, I'm hoping we actually are able to continue this tournament from where it is. Uh, get a few admins, myself included, for when I have times to admin it, as well as when I could get people available to watch and maintain the games. But as well as just make sure any issues that have come up get dealt with as well as any further issues that come up get dealt, uh, dealt with ASAP. Cool. Uh, little, I mean, this is your opportunity to, to have a chat with one of the TAW guys. Uh, yeah, I, I think all you need to do really is get a, uh, a an IC room in, in QuakeNet on QuakeNet. That would make you guys a lot more available. Have some people in hashtag game shrine and, and uh, yeah, it might work out. Also, change the rules. I know it's too late for that, but you know. And that's one thing we'll... I actually got some guys I'm going to talk with on Friday to make sure all that gets sorted out. I will be getting a IRC room set up at least for temporary use for TAW in the QuakeNet just so that it is available. main reason why I suggested the Tribal War before was more because I'm more of a NA player myself as Simitax has actually talked with me in the past. And I'm... That's where I'm situated, so that's primarily where I see. Okay. Yeah, but I guess I would agree with Little, though. If you guys are going to run an EU tournament, um, it would be worth having some kind of presence in sort of where the EU people hang out. And I understand that. I've been hearing that some of our guys have been starting to pug a bit more again, which I was hoping people would be able to reach out for, to them there, but I guess part of it is we just don't have as much of a presence in the EU as we used to, so our members, our member time at, is just kind of all over. Cool. Um, anyone else got any comments for, for Night Shaper? No? Well, that's fine. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really glad to have you on to just, like, you know, give us kind of a, what's the word for it? You know, uh, you know, a face to the the name, really. That because like like Little was saying earlier, you guys kind of dropped off the planet a little bit. So it's good to see you guys still invested in the tournament. I mean, you still have a team for TAW in that tournament. So it's good to see you guys, you know, you know popping up again. And uh, I hope it goes well. You know, the the group stages still need to be closed up, and of course, then then it'll go to playoffs. And uh, you know, you could really turn this thing around and still make it into a good tournament. One one thing I'd really like to know, and I don't know if you can tell us this night, Shaper, or maybe you can follow us up. Uh, at a later date is you know what's the point like are there any are there any prizes like sort of what's going on on that side of things do you know anything along those lines we have talked with apc and there is some prizes lined up i'm not sure exactly what those prizes will be but uh when we have a better idea we will be making that announcement to everyone it most likely will be some form of tribes gold situation okay like we did with our oceanic tournament but overall we don't know what the prizes will be at this moment in time but when we do have that kind of knowledge, we will be giving that out to everyone else. Cool. Out of uh, curiosity, do you guys still stand by the, the the sort of idea that the old rules are, are better than the new ones? Quite honestly, I'm not sure. Like, Part of it is I haven't been following the rule set for the last couple months just because of personal issues. But uh, from what I've been seeing, there is a bit of a transition happening that it does make for some interesting gameplay. I don't know what the actual, like, what our actual EU guys feel, though, to give a correct answer on that one, though. Okay. Uh, sorry, I was trying to in the chat. Because I think the vast majority of the European scene thinks um, the old rules are absolutely atrocious. And every single game so far that's been played in this tournament has been, like, agreed upon um, new rules. And that'll be one of those things that I am bringing up with everyone uh, on Friday when I meet with them and get that sorted out. Okay, well that's that's really good news then. Cool. And uh, I don't think any 
team will be particularly against changing it or you know favoring the new rule set um i think the main problem was just not being able to have an admin to contact and with a new ic and that new yeah. irc um just to confirm rules and things like that uh i think that'll improve everything that, that that's gone a bit awry 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 so far and, and again, I apologize about that. As I said, like I personally had some issues at uh, comp, and because of the command shift we had with the European guys, that's caused a bit of issues as well. So uh, that's hopefully going to be dealt with, and things, I hope, go a lot smoother for it. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for, for calling in Night Shaper, and we look forward to maybe get in touch with me at some point once you've got things cleared up, uh, and then we can give you a bit more sort of solid promotion on the show, uh, which would be great. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, as well, just want to give you as a heads up, the finals for our o uh, Oceanic Draft Tournament is this weekend, so we should have more for that as well. I, uh, I didn't realize that I was still playing the game over there. I thought everything went a bit pear-shaped over in Oceania. Uh, we still have that event going on. It sounds like it's still fairly active. So, oh, that's good news. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks, Nice Shaper. We'll uh, we'll move on to some of the other call-ins, and yeah, we look forward to touching base with you soon. I look forward cool. to talking with you guys again. See you, mate. Cheers. Okay, uh, I'm gonna save King of the Juice because he could be quite interesting. Uh, let's go with who do you reckon? Someone who's a bit not interesting. Not interesting. <laughs> I was joking. That's, uh, that's... I think Drunk Jedi was there first. Okay. <laughs> Little, sorry, do you have something to say? No, it's fine. <laughs> okay, Drunken, how are you doing, mate? Uh, hello, I'm sorry if my mic's a bit bad, but uh, I have no choice. Okay, what's up? Uh, I've just got a few things to say. Um, firstly, thank you for the little shout-out about my guides. We really appreciate that. Oh, good work, uh, mate. You know, you put in the time, it's worth mentioning. Yeah, thanks, man. And um, just regarding that, actually, I Holmes actually posted on my kind of mega thread about the guides saying, you know, I want you to get these up in Water Zone. And I had a, you know, fairly lengthy uh, call with them on Skype. And essentially, at the moment, they don't have the support on the website. It isn't designed currently, so it can support the kind of things that I'll be submitting. But I'm going to talk to them again Friday, and I'm going to see if we can get that sort of thing up there, and perhaps more, which leads me to my second point. Is there anything that the Travis community wants to be written? Anything from guides to articles to even fanfics about... I was going to say fanfics. <laughs> yeah. We had a great one with uh, Yuzo the other week. Well, I'm not quite sure I want to do an erotic fanfic. Um, well, then there's no point. Just what, yeah, well, what other kind of fanfic <laughs> I, is there? Well, APC, I was talking to APC Well, that's actually a slash it. fic, isn't it? That's, they're called slash fics, aren't they? I think fanfics are just stories based on other things like well exactly like apc suggested it'd be like a life of a soldier week one sort of thing i'm just wondering what kind of uh, interest there is in this sort of thing so um yeah people just feel free to just say in the chat or post on the reddit post about this week's behind the blue but just say anything anywhere i can find out you know what, what do you want from this i do want to go back quickly so you spoke to um Holmes, Holmes you said about yeah. uh, posting uh the things on the uh, site when he said that they didn't have the support for it what kind of stuff were you talking about so far you've done text based things so i assume this website can support text oh of course it can it's just that the actual um format hasn't been you know drawn up yet there is no place on the website for me to submit it i yet. see okay that so there's no text based thing. kind of tutorial yeah like page. you know how you can submit a video there's nowhere for you to submit like a blog post yeah sure okay i see that. Yeah. he doesn't uh, actually, no, I can't remember that. But yeah, um, I'm going to be talking to him this Friday, hopefully, and uh, we'll try and work something out. He's working with Hausier, um, maybe a couple of other people, hopefully, if they we can get their support as well. And, you know, I'm hoping to also do more um, tutorial guides on uh, roles. So I know that I did that capping guide, maybe do an offense guide. Um, they'll be a bit more difficult because capping's a bit more simple, really, to describe, in my opinion. Offense is simple. Well, Shoot the dudes at the other base. <laughs> Done. Put that. Yeah, you can write that down. Quote me. <laughs> I'll, I'll write that down. And I'll quote Doc. I'll, I'll Excellent. Quote you. Just uh, one final thing. Um, it's been done to death, I know, but I just, Hi-Rez, please optimize this game. I, I'm heartbroken that I can't play anymore. It really kills me. And I know that I haven't got the best specs, but if they could just give us some sort of support for playing with lower end PCs, I would just. No. Why don't you go talk to Shrek? His uh, any look pretty damn low res. <laughs> oh no, you haven't seen mine, Doc. You have not seen mine. I am playing in 640 by 480 
it is literally everything down to zero, pretty much. It's incredible I can actually play at all. You can blind fire really good easily. I think people will always find a way to make this game look worse. Like, I, like in like a year, like I think the 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 uh, high res like art department is just gonna like crumble like as they see people like with these terrible INIs. It's just like literally, it will be black and white soon, and just like <laughs> the enemies are green. I actually made a post it's just to my grayscale. I made a post to my tribes linking to the uh, pace bin, linking to a pace bin of my current INI, the last one that I used before I installed them. So if people want to find that, then um, you can really see what this game can go to. Well, I, I hope maybe, you know, you get some hardware or something, dude. Because uh, honestly, I think, you know, the, the likelihood of us getting any significant dev effort putting into optimization is unlikely at this point. Uh, so I think the ball is more in your court. Speak to JP about it. Yeah, sp sorry. Uh, speak to JP about, uh, JP about it. He's a real geek when it comes to the, and he's always changing his and updating it. Um, like, just ask for the lowest he can find. Um, because uh, when you're going to that point, then... If, if it still can't be run, then you, you've got to look into improving your end. Cool. Um, which I'm sure you do. Anyway, like I said earlier, uh, great work on the guides, Drunken. And yeah, I'd li like to see them at, in somewhere a bit more static. So yeah, keep it up. Thank you. Cool. Well, uh, we'll catch you around, mate. See ya. That was Drunken Jedi. I think Nitro was next? I believe so. We got in Nitro Dust. How you doing, Nitro? Oh, I'm fine. I... How are y'all? <laughs> Doing well, mate. What's up? Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, the last time we were talking about new players getting into the community and stuff like that, and I was thinking we we have to, we have to play a pug dot com website, and it it talks only about pugs. But when I read the chat and and the try to send channel, for example, you always see people. Ah, I'm not good. Should I play pugs? I don't dare. I, I don't know. And that was pretty much what I was thinking. It was pretty terrible. And I think if we could change the wording on that side a bit to more, to be more like join the community, come on, Marvel, talk to us, and then put the entire park stuff pre further down, uh, it might encourage more people to just join us, Marvel. And then we can tell them, yeah, want to play a game? Doesn't matter if you suck. <laughs> so that's an interesting point, like just changing the way that whole concept is being pitched forward. Uh, yeah, that that might have legs. Uh, what do you reckon, Yodz and Clyde? Do you reckon the the whole pug thing has just too many like overbearing connotations? Do you reckon we could reword that stuff and maybe get a bit more interest? Yeah, well, uh, I think every time I go and play in pubs, I always get called bad, bad names. So uh, I think there's um, a bit of a divide that uh, people don't really want to play comp. But that's not everyone, sure. But there's a difference between comp well, not and everyone, pugs, but... I think. You know, pugs is just... A game that's not a pub it's just like an organized game it is the competitive format that people dislike though i think the seven versus seven sort of the latest mentality that i think it's the yeah. it's, it's more of the uh chain weapons i think that people find problem with um you know you go into any any arena oh, server and eventually arena. someone will... holy yeah, crap but man. those people change their minds pretty quickly when they get into like competitive uh i mean Somebody like Nordmark used to be one of those people, actually. Before he started pugging, he'd be really against chain weapons and whatnot, and would, like, blue plate and pugs all day long. Um, but, I mean, he's, like, number one chain whore now. <laughs> so they, they change. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, I think, actually, one of the good ways that to get people into pugs is speaking to them in-game, in, like, you know, you, you come across someone who's not bad, and you say, hey, you're pretty good if you tried pugging. And... I think maybe more people should do that. I try and do it every now and then and try and bring people in. I think a few people have maybe come in and played a few bugs. Um, but I think that's a really good way to get people to come in and do it. Just, um, excuse me, um, even just speaking to them for five minutes and saying, oh, do, are you interested in this kind of thing? You know, you just be encouraging, be, be a hero. What do you reckon, Simtex? Change the terminology a bit? Do you think that can bring more people in? Oh, that's certainly an interesting way to look about it. I mean... I'd be happy to see um, just some experimentation with that. Like, like it's it's got valid points. I'd like to see it tried. Yeah, what I was thinking, the more people just join and that they don't feel intimidated by the entire pug uh, concept and comp, um, getting organized and having to play a role. So first get them in and then tell them what, what they can do and encourage them to, to play. Because just reading like this wall of text, what's going on, and you have no freaking idea what, what you should do. You maybe watch the VOD, maybe. 
I don't know. That, that's why I'm thinking. Sit, tell them, come to us. We will talk to you. Have fun. And if you want, you can play a game. Okay, I'm giving Cookie Monster one month to come and pug with us. If he doesn't, by then I am officially banning him from this channel. That's wow. pretty brutal. Yep. I'm calling him out and making an example of him. If he isn't on within a month, I'm giving him to the 15th. So we began this little segment with, we want to be more welcoming and no. cushioning for players. He's and pushed it too far. <laughs> except except against Cookie Monster, I guess, yeah. No, I like Poor Cookie. Cookie. <laughs> I just want to... I just want to come play with him, man. I just want to, I just want to play anyway, Nitro, that was a great call. I will get you a code. I don't have any on me at the moment. Um, All right. But uh, touch base with me later, and I will I will get you a goal code or something, because that was definitely a very good call and topic. Well, enjoy. Bye-bye. Thank you, Nitro. Catch you around. I will make a note. Get code for Nitro. APC, hey, you can expect a call in a minute. Uh, all right, I think it was Taylor that was in next. Uh, we had Taylor on last week. How are you doing tonight, Taylor? I'm doing good. Cool. What's going on tonight? Oh, well, um, the other day I was thinking about some more tribes ideas, I guess, that I want to share with the community um, since I sort of brought up the whole new blood thing. And um, I was thinking, imagine if, you know, you can create a party and invite your friends and tribes, but nobody really uses that because you can join off of somebody. Imagine if there was a tournament option where you add people to your team as well as the enemy team and then you're allowed to choose how many maps you want to do and which ones specifically. Because not everybody knows how to, you know, um, hit the tilde sign and put in the commands to change maps. And I think it would make it easier for people to practice with their friends in like a pug style. That'd be awesome if high res did that. So it sounds like you want some kind of automated mechanism that you can form a 7v7 match from within the game client uh, maybe even if the people that you played that game with were matched by some kind of algorithm to be at a relatively equal skill level or potentially even some kind of clan system where you could create parties and, and form a lobby before going into the game does that sound about right that is exactly it i think that would make it easier for new people i think to sort of practice with their friends who are also new versus strangers who they might not want to like communicate with over voice chat or Skype or something and makes it easier for new people to join in as well as older players who are still a bit timid about joining pugs. I just played my first pug the other day and I've been playing since last August. Congratulations. Thank was it fun? It did you enjoy it? Yeah, how'd it go? I did enjoy it. Um, I learned that I can't really play Raider offense very well unless I'm on maybe Dangerous Crossing because of the hills and everything and gaining speed to get over there to clear the stand. So I, I did learn a lot just by playing one pug. Cool. Well, I think that, uh, you know, there, there are two ways that you can go about what you were talking about, um, you know, that kind of system. And I think if that system had been in place since the start of when Tribes was made, then 77 Tribes Send would be a whole lot more popular. Um, just that ease of access into it, being able to play um, competitive base games and actually being able to play this, like... Uh, you know the game uh, as it as I think it should be played. Then it will be a whole lot more popular. And um, there are IRC bots that do that, and you are basically entered into a random system. But there's a lot of barriers in doing that. In that you have to get your IRC, you have to make an account, join a certain channel, mm. know the right way to get into it. Um, so that's obviously out of the window. And then another yeah, way would be have be official seven v seven servers set up for it, um, which would be close enough to to do that, and you can. You know, maybe invite people and join us a party onto those servers. So, it's definitely something that would have been really, really helpful, and still would be really helpful um, for a lot of players. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Taylor, I mean, I'll I'll let you know this is so, like I was being a little bit kind of uh, facetious and sarcastic when I was saying that because this is something we've talked about for for a long time. Seven v seven matchmaking and the ability to do the competitive format from directly within the game client is something that you know we have wanted for a very very long time um and yeah it, unfortunately it's just something that hasn't uh, gotten the attention uh, from the development team that you know would be required to implement such a thing so you know it it's a great idea and it's kind of cool that you've kind of come up with that and 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 brought it brought it up and saying this would be a real help um unfortunately the the short answer is it's very unlikely by the development team he means the development guy ah <laughs> uh. If only. Yeah. Even just having some official servers that were switched over to official 77. And how simple is that? 
uh, having a bunch of official servers, maybe 20 for each region, having 7v7. And I know the reason they didn't do it, the reason they didn't do it is because you're limiting the amount of players and it costs money to have servers. So you're, you're basically getting less bang for your buck out of each server. But it would have, I think, helped a lot in the long run. Well, um, instead of getting more servers, they could have um, a few of them dedicated and have them on a rotation where after you've entered into a tournament party, you have to wait maybe um, 15 minutes afterwards or you just go like into the queue sort of with playing League of Legends. How um, if you leave in the middle of being assigned to a team, then you have to wait a certain amount of time and like wait until there's another rotation of players trying to enter a game pretty much. Yeah, uh, that that's definitely something that works, and a lot of uh, games uh, do do that. But it still brings the problem for them that the server. Then I'm not exactly sure how it works, but I believe it it means that basically less players are p uh, playing on that server, meaning they need more to support everyone, which costs them more money. I'm I think that's would be how it works, but yeah, it is something that's, that's I thought really that annoying. I had like a new spanking idea. I felt so proud. But <laughs> oh, we're well ahead on this one. No, it's definitely something that's really important, and uh, I mean, it shows that you know, um, it's it's such an easy to identify and identif uh, identify thing um, that you know we could have used a long time ago and still could really use. Um, yeah, it's still a great idea. Yep, yeah, let's let's, let's do, it. do it. Cool. All right, well, thanks for the call, in Taylor, and uh, yeah, look forward to hearing more about your pugging uh, journey. All right, and I'll probably be streaming it, or I'll like message you and like update you, telling you about it. Even Can pimp your stream, girl. Yeah, like yeah. tell us where to I find you, and also drop it in the chat. I know I I haven't been streaming as much as I should have because of you know I'm trying to graduate on time, but I'll I'll get around to it. Stowe, give us some tips. Uh, it's overrated. Don't bother. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I need to graduate, Stowe. Play tribes for a living. I want to play Tribe for a living. That would be the dream. I love Tribe so much. Well, we'll need some more than two and a half grand tournaments to make that a reality. We're getting there. Baby steps. Baby steps. All right, Taylor, we're going to let you go. Thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time. Thank you. Cool. See ya. Uh, so we're going to bring in our final caller of the evening. It is the one. It is the only. It is the king of the Jews. How are you doing tonight, king? He'll have to unmute himself. Come on, get on there, get on there. All right, I'll punch him out, and he'll figure that out. In the meantime, we'll go well, up he's, a He was speaking. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's muted. He was talking, dude. He's muted. No, he wasn't. Have I got him locally muted or something crazy? Yeah, maybe. Where'd he go? He just yeah, DC'd. Oh, I literally well just done. came 20 really? times listening to his voice. Like. <laughs> All right, well, we'll let him reconnect. In the meantime, we've got Alkalol. How you doing, Alko? Doing pretty good, Alcohol. man. Alkalol! Hello. Hello. What's going on, mate? Okay, you can. Uh, nothing much. I call it number one. Number last final. Name. You guys can hear me, right? We yeah, can we hear you. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. Well, uh, I don't know why I'm here, but I, I guess APC cat code. That's about it. Well, I don't um, think he's a coder. Well, actually, he's learning PHP. <laughs> nah, he's a coder. <laughs> yeah, PHP sucks. He was hired as a programmer. That isn't true. Is that, is that all you I got? I need the emails. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll lock release solid that out call of here. in. Ten See you guys ten. later. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, mate. Bye. Yep. yep. All right. Well done, Alka. Okay. I think he deserves a code for speaking. Yeah. Actually, should we get, should we get him back in? <laughs> um, no, I just realized that I had King of the Jews muted locally because last time I was on Mumble with King of the Jews, he was doing this. Oh, yeah. He does do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And so I, I muted him, but I obviously never unmuted him. But we've got him back now. Uh, how you doing, King? I've got you unmuted this time. Are we good to go, then? We are very we are good, to, good go. to go. How are you, King? What's going on? Uh, I'm sure you all know why I'm here. No, please enlighten us. I'm, I'm saying goodbye for the last time, unfortunately. Why are you saying goodbye? Why are you leaving us? Because I've not been able to do anything on my computer for the past few weeks. And honestly, I have not missed Tribes one bit. I've been doing other stuff, and Tribes is just not interesting to me right now. I'm sorry. You sound really depressed. Are you okay? No, it's fucking exams at the moment. He's just really. chill as fuck, man. Yeah. <laughs> He's always such a... Uh, just really haven't missed the game. 
so I'm, I'm saying goodbye to everyone. Well, what have you missed, King? I've missed you, Doc, and I've missed oh. Harry. And I missed the community. I did tell APC actually last week that I was strongly, strongly considering removing myself from the game. And I have just made the game gamer tag or whatever the hell is King of the Jews available. So oh please, Nine Watts or whoever it was who wanted it, go free, grab it. Up. It's my passing gift. Oh man. It's, why it's why did day. you pick that name to begin with? Yeah, let's talk about that. Because one day when I was sat down and I found out about this fancy new game called Tribes, um, I decided to play it and then I thought about a name for about half an hour and this is what I ended up with. <laughs> so great story there. You thought of the name and you came up with King of the Jews. Hell yeah. Is yeah. it inspired by anyone in particular? Maybe. Not really, no. No, okay. Just I just have a way of thinking up uh, slightly uh, humorous names. I think. I are, are you Jewish? No. Okay. I'm in no way affiliated with. So you religion. are the king of the Jews, but you aren't a Jew yourself. Hell's yeah. Okay. Just wanted to check that. Well, I gotta say, man, I'm gonna miss you because even though we didn't always speak all the time, because you're not about all the time. Um. You know, you were there from when I started playing. You were there before I started playing, actually. Yeah, so. man, I was like the first non-American admin on the Pug service. There you go. So, it sucks to see you go, man. Mm. We missed you, I don't know. You are always really popular and always really fun to have around. Yes, yes. Uh, I appreciate everyone's sentiment. And I will miss you all. I may try and pop in to say final goodbyes to Anarchy, because I know he'll miss me. Uh, little Yods, any any final thoughts for King of the Jews? I will miss your delicious voice. Thank you, Little. Uh, good luck in whatever you decide to do, man. At the moment, it's just the gym. That's all I've been doing. <laughs> King of the Jews, beasting it in the gym. Ugh. Hell yeah. Do you even Why lift, you King? That to uh, actually, at the moment, no, I don't. But I've been cycling 200 kilometers a day on my bike at the moment. Seriously? So. Wow. Yep. 200k a day, that's not On, right. on exercise bike, yep. Something like 8 hours it's taking me. That's that's a lot of cycling. I mean, it's cause that's I'm, a lot of wasted time. Why I'm don't you play, to Venice play it while you're doing the summer. it? I'm cycling to Venice over the summer and I want to have good training. See, the problem Venice. with that is... There's, there's never, a seat in the way. Exactly. Those bike seats are so uncomfortable. I can't imagine... Running on one of those for for eight hours and then yeah, wow. balls of steel. They sort of they sort of come around after a while. Just sort of happens. <laughs> well, okay, well, this is depressing. These yeah, things. I mean, it, it, it's really sad to see you go, King. I, I hope it is only a passing fancy. Um, of course, you can always just do what I do, uh, which is not actually play the game, but still hang around with the streams and and talk about it. That that that's still completely legit. I may pop in once in a while. We would I'm becoming that. more and more distant from the whole game as, in general, as I'm sure you've noticed. Dude, this is like Roxton all over again. It's true, man. Oh, God, what the fuck happened to Roxton? Basically, yeah, what I you're saying. Him. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, he even kind of sounds like you. Maybe it's something to do with yeah. that kind of posh English accent. Yeah, Which I'm, means he I'm, sounds I'm, like you. They I'm sound definitely like you not, not at all. Roxton. I'm definitely not Roxton. Nope. It's true. Well, we, we hope to see you around again, King. But if this is the final goodbye, thanks for playing. And uh, GG in the future. Yes, thank you very much. And I'll be seeing you around. Maybe I don't know. Goodbye, Give him everyone. a press of the GG button. Just press the GG button? Okay. GG! There you go. That one's for you, King. See you. Goodbye, now. All Bye. right. See you around, Bye, King. So uh, just quickly, I did see a really nice question from the chat. Um, oh, yeah. I forget who posted this, but uh, I thought it was a really good one. So I think maybe we could even give them a code if we've got any. Um, but yeah. We I, don't, I mean, but I'll get some. Okay, you can decide. If It might have to say who it was because I've forgotten who I copied it from. But I have a topic question for Behind the Blue Plate. For all the time you play Tribes, what is the ratio between pub play and all other play? Is it like 50-50? Well, let's go around the panel a little. What, what is it for you? Oh, I used to be like number one pub star um, until like rank 43 or something. I just pubbed all the time. Um, so it's almost like 
probably way more than 50% pubs. But more than 50% pubs? Just, yeah, but lately it's just gone pretty much and the occasional pub. Yods, how about yourself? Uh, yeah, pretty much just the same for me. Uh, lately, hardly any pubs, maybe a couple of TDMs to warm up or something, but yeah, pretty much just pugs and screams and stuff now. Same text? I would say 70% pubs, but if I could pug or scrim when I would be pubbing, I would do that. But I would say 70% pubs. Okay. Stoke? Um, right now, I would say that I'm probably 50% uh, pubs, 25% pugs, and 25% comp. Okay, so 50-50 bit... pubs versus... Yeah, maybe a little bit more skewed towards comp than that. Cool. Maybe 30, 20. Uh, personally, I don't play that much at all. Uh, I find it difficult to find a time to play anything these days. Uh, so I play pubs mostly because I I can't. I find it difficult to find you know the potential hour that you need to lock in uh, to play a pug. So you play know, pug .com. exactly play pug .com. You know, for a pug, it's got to be all well timed. You've got to be on the server. It, like if you want the perfect kind of time slice of a pug you've got to get on right before one's starting so you know right when there's about the right number of people in roles uh you've got to hope that the captains get picked quickly and then the teams get picked quickly um and, and you got to hope they so, get picked and you get well most of the time i do because i'm in the new like i've just joined so like you know there's usually a few people left in the previously played pug or whatever uh so i i haven't had that much trouble like it's not been that i for some reason when i play pugs there's not a, a load of people around it's usually it's just, just enough there just isn't generally oh well, yeah well, perhaps so yeah i would say personally i play mostly pubs if i if i play so there you go good yeah. question i think that was from demo evolved yeah demo evolved that was so. we'll get you a code I, I i have a few people to get codes for nitro and demo um okay well that's going to be it uh for for call-ins and and questions so i we have two things to do one is like i said there's no blue plate challenge but we do have two plays of the week um, and Halimar also gave me a few links uh, that he wants me to show that happened in the Vex game. So what order should we do this in, Stoke? Uh, okay, I'll do the blue plate challenge next week's thing at the end. Okay. Um, maybe we should do plays of the week first, then do Halimar stuff, and then go for the blue plate. All right, cool. Um, so we're going to start off with, uh, this is from Dees, uh, and this is uh, about a minute long, and it's, it's pretty epic, so I'll pump it on. Yeah. Ben should I? Okay, then. Out. Ben, how much health oh, and stuff? Yeah, Sister. we will be home in 10 and we Okay, I'll try to grab 17. I can't be in on stands. I need uh no one that covers me. Ah, blocks. Bro, if you just keep him going. I'm going in Jen. Yeah, I'm going Jen, going Jen. Yeah, please I'm move. Down. Trix is after you. Oh no, he's he's left you. No, he's coming now. He's alone. Push, push, push. Let's move. I'm in the dungeons. Uh, I'm coming to, to the entrance of. I'm coming Mary to the entrance. Mary got one shot now. I'm staying on stand. Other people around. Nice, nice. That's nice. The vendors come out to the front. Uh, careful the cave. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna stop Hello. a bit through so. I yeah, wait for region. Clear him and let it go. Whatever. I'm going out. <laughs> <laughs> it's dead. Well, you yeah. can come in, bit, guys. Next time, just set up Coming, a back crying. and pass. Point it if you have to. Yes. Yeah, he's oh going out. Totally planned. <laughs> Come on, guys. Nice. Love the teasers. Alan, I'm in front of you. I just kill tracks. I'm on stand. Oh, okay. Alan, pass me. <laughs> that was the cheek. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't believe it. It's we literally came out of their cave. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I mean, he basically team killed uh, all of the other team there. I mean, Stowe, you were in that game. Was uh, that a pretty tense situation? Well, that was really funny. I mean, first of all, you got to see that was Dees who submitted that, who's uh, our sniper on NMZ. And uh, he, he's just like getting loads of kills throughout. But the funniest thing was, is that. That started out with an e grab, went into the gen room, looped around the whole fruit of the gen room, and we just walked it back through the midfield. Um, so it, it was just a really odd, funny situation. Um, and uh, yeah, Dee sent that in to me today. Well, thank you very much, Dee. Some very, uh, very cool shooting in that one. We also have one from Anarchy. I think this one was on Reddit. Uh, I haven't even watched this one yet, so I'm just going to put it on. It's funny. 
Yeah, yeah, I like just cheese pizza from Pizza Hut. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, uh, just, uh, just, just the normal hand toss stuff that they do. That's, uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. I, I love, he submitted, like, three things like that, where he's just, like, completely preoccupied with something, and just, like, gets something like that. It's really, really funny. Um, like, I, I remember one with the Reese cup, he called it. The Reese's Reese's, Reese's pieces. peanut butter. Oh my god, the yeah. buttercup thing. It was so funny. Yeah, I love those. Cool. Uh, let's move straight into uh, Halima's highlights. Halima's highlights. That rolls off the tongue really well. I oh, made, I just made that weekly up. segment. There you go. Halimar, if you want to create a weekly segment, I'm happy to call it Halimar's Highlights. Here we go. This is from the Vex versus Egocentric game. I'm not sure exactly what these clips are, so I'm as in the dark as you guys. Like two successful tunnel caps. And that's like it the entire time. But Tasty got out with that. Oh, we got some esports. Hell yes. I caught that on camera. Bullets hopped out of the strike after that thing bounced. And, uh,. He might bring this thing home. This might be a cap. And there's a uh, counter strike grab right there. Strike play coming out all over the place. And this is going home. And Shottingham with the last second save. And wow, nice return by Hot Rod right there to get that thing uh, quickly returned and prevent this crash from getting it uh, home. That looks like Vertical and uh, Shottingham are crashing on this. Oh, uh, <laughs> this game falls down the tunnel. <laughs> I am so glad I caught that on camera. I'm so oh, glad. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you, Blitz. You have made my night. That was. I didn't know tanks could fit down that hole. Just watching it now. Let me know when you catch up. Wait, I didn't even see it. Wait, did, did the tank live? I don't know. Like, I just saw it disappear, and that was it. Like, can you actually keep a tank down there in the gens? Like, I remember back in closed uh, beta on um, old, old Bella, you could actually put a tank in the gens. Uh, down it goes. It was already pretty damaged. So, n no, in fact, I'm pretty sure that went down. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that died. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to say no. Oh, yeah, there's the replay. Yeah, no, I don't think it. Actually, does it take damage when it falls? I didn't see it on the kill. I don't know. Thing. I don't know if tanks take fall damage. Hmm. hmm. This requires someone our researchers, our dedicated researchers, to work on it. Yeah, someone in chat should confirm or deny. All right. Well, let's uh, move into next week's blue plate challenge, though. Okay. So this week we didn't have any submissions, uh, which is unfortunate. So this week we're going to do something a little bit different. This is for who anyone who doesn't know. This is the blue plate challenge. We're going to do weekly challenges like this, um, where you submit clips to um, be in for a chance to win tribes, free tribes, gold, and uh, stuff basically of your choice um, so yeah um, here and this week it's going to be a little bit different like I said it's not going to be the best submission it's going to be the first submission it's going to be the first person who can send me one uh, video that has each of these five things and it's like a scavenger hunt you have to submit it with one video the first person get these and please don't submit old clips it's going to be from now that you're allowed to record these and send them in um, so it's a blue plate special, a headshot with a sniper rifle, a artillery shot with a mortar or merv, an inventory station kill, or a uh, and a mid air melee. Okay, so just quickly, um, it it can't be multiple clips. It has to be one video together. So like multiple clips, but in one video. You have to stitch sense. them together, basically. Stitch them together. Um. um yeah, and 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 do that. You, like yeah, you can edit them. Like put them together. Just, it, it doesn't have to be one clip, it has to be five separate clips uploaded. And I'll, I will post this on Reddit so you um can, you know, check back to the list. And it's only five things. Blue plate special, headshot yeah, with they, sniper rifle. They can be completely separate things. It's not like you have to do this all in like one row in a few minutes. You can go off, you can pub for as long as you need uh, to get all of those all of those instances. So the, the blue plate special, the headshot with the sniper rifle, the artillery shot with a mortar, the inventory station kill, the mid-air melee. Uh, and you need to record all of those things, stitch them together in a montage and send it over uh, to behind the blue plate at uh, gmail.com. Yep, behind the blue plate at gmail.com, like Dr. said, and it's the first person to get the scavenger hunt. And you need all of them. Yes, you need to get every single one. Um, maybe we'll do some sort of bingo thing. 
like there's a bingo card and people i don't know you'd have to do that live um anyway <laughs> we're not waiting <laughs> yeah um so you can't inventory station kill yourself uh, you can't kill yourself for these things so blue plate special headshot with sniper rifle mortar or merv artillery shot inventory station kill and mid-air melee i'll give a bonus if anyone can blue plate special themselves i'll give you a code yes i will shall i agree with that just trying to think if there's any way you can do that i don't think there is what? Inbo station, uh, I don't think that'll be particularly hard. You generally find a lot of people in pubs just standing still. So Wait, just... I, I got an idea. What if you, if you're on the back of a grab cycle, you shoot a disc without moving, and then you turbo jump off when you get back in the front seat? Could that do it? I still don't think you'd be fast enough. I don't think so either. Like, I know you could do it with the, the with the changed physics. So maybe if you find a physics server, then you could do that. Oh, but... Black Mako just said it. Black Mako, he knows how to do it in chat. Backwards ski with Blink's fuser and then jump yeah. into it. I think it, it you basically do doesn't with, move. Uh, I thought that was only with different physics where you can get a huge amount of speed with crazy physics, but maybe not. Maybe it, it, not. It's, it's like the hover disc. Okay, well, you can totally blue plate yourself if you want to, um, but it'll probably be faster to <laughs> blue plate yourself. Yeah, yeah, you, should, you shouldn't allow uh, like the hover disc where it barely moves and you just jump into your own disc. That's cheating. Uh, so That's yeah, you upload it to a YouTube and then email the URL, or you can no, you wouldn't be able to Twitch with it. Um, See, I'm pretty sure that doesn't actually work. I don't. I remember this like a long time ago. Threads about this. And really yeah, there was a whole bunch of people doing it. How it doesn't actually kill you, like no matter what you do. Well, it doesn't it eventually you? explode? Maybe from the splash. I don't know. But I don't think. Yeah, it's not yeah. That's why I say. Yes, if I anyone can post... do it, I'll give you a code. Yep. Good okay. luck. And if you can do it all in one, then you'll get a code too. <laughs> Even if you're like, you, you submit it on uh, Tuesday next week, if you get it all in one clip that's not like horrendously long. All right, cool. Well, that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna do it for the stuff. Uh, Stowaway's gonna post all that on Reddit because uh, there's a bit to think about there in terms of uh, noting down all of the different pieces that you need. Uh, but that's gonna do it for the show. So let's move into final thoughts and shout outs. And we'll start with you, Little. Um, no final thoughts, I guess, but um, shout outs to number one team in North America, uh, Kout, and also shout outs to some some European team like Pigeon or something. Isn't Kout dead? Uh, no. <laughs> pigeon. Number one. Yeah, Pigeon. Okay. Pretty sure that's it. Yep. Cool. Thank you very much. Little Yods and Clay, over to you. Uh, Shout out to DLS and. Um... And all the house league teams, they don't get enough love, I don't think so. Good call. Simtex? Uh, shout out to Qualm, who just, like, this just arrived at the Steel Series uh, Sensei, and it says Qualm is OP on the bottom. So thank you very much, Qualm. My old mouse is dying, and he just sent me his backup. So thank you very much, Qualm. And everybody should watch tonight's match. Yes, big shout out to Fishsticks and APC covering the Denial versus ZFZ match starting at 10 p.m. EST on this very channel. So stick around for that. Stowaway, final thoughts and shoutouts. As always, thanks to everyone uh, for watching. Thanks to the panelists for coming on. Thank you for the call-ins. We had some nice call-ins this week. Um, we did. We, yeah, we did. We did. We did. Um, it's good to be back. Um, I did miss that show. Obviously, thanks to Yeso for covering that. Thanks to Jamie for making the awesome spinning logo that I've got going there. Can we maybe full screen that? Check that out. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Boom. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my, my, my TV going on here. My, my spinning logo. Um, and you know, tune in next week. Do the blue plate challenge. I'm literally posting on Reddit now. Um, I know there's something else. You took your hat off. I did take my hat off. I did. Um, did shout out to my notice? shaved shaved hat. I don't think they did, which was the plan all along. Um, shout out to my shaved sides of my head. That was a great idea. Um, yeah, GG. Cool. Thank you very much, Stu. Uh, yeah, I'm going to echo those thoughts. Thank you very much for the panelists tonight. Little Yodson, and Clive Simtex, thank you very much for your time uh, coming on the show. It's awesome. We had a great discussion tonight. And thanks all for your uh, your input and your time. Thanks all to the viewers. Uh, like I say, every week it's not a show without the guys watching us. So, uh, you know, we do it for you guys. We do it for the entertainment. And thanks for watching. So it's going to be the same thing, same time next week. 
Uh, behind the blue plate, 3 p.m. EST, 9 p.m. Central European on Wednesday night. And uh, I'm just going to give a little tidbit. In two weeks, we're going to have a pretty big show. Uh, in two weeks, it's going to be the one-year anniversary of Behind the Blue Plate. So we're trying to put something cool together for that. have no idea what that's going to entail yet. It's just an idea at this stage. But, you know, it's a pretty big milestone for us. So looking forward to that. Dude, it's going to be so good. Oh, can I say one more thing? Of course you can. No, you can't go away. No, okay. I'm joking. <laughs> I think the one year anniversary for uh, Jim Christ's Reddit Pugs is coming up soon. I don't remember exactly when it started, but it's going on for almost a year. I know it at least happened in June. Oh, it's it's been over a year. It's been over a year? Like it must like, be. I'm over pretty a year. sure it's I'm pretty sure it started in May. Well if you think about it, I didn't like this didn't start until well into Reddit Pugs, and that's on the EU side. That's true. I mean I, I, I formed this idea on, on Reddit Pugs. Yeah, so it's surely gone past a year. Oh, well, shout out to the pugs going strong. <laughs> <laughs> Good work, Jim Christ. Over one year of uh, NA organized pugs. Good stuff. Uh, awesome. Yeah, so that's going to do it for the show. Thanks, for guys, for watching. Uh, we'll catch you next week. Uh, like I said, we'll have something pretty cool in a couple of weeks. We'll figure that out over the next two weeks to figure out exactly what that is going to entail. Until then... Uh, good luck out there in the NATL, in the EUTL. Good thing seeing that kicking off yet again. Big shout out to the House League teams, as Yeltsin Klein mentioned. Uh, we'll try to give you guys a bit more coverage uh, over the next, you know, several months of behind the blue plate. I know we weren't so good at that uh, over the last season, so we'll definitely try to keep our fingers on the pulse a little bit more. Until then, we'll catch you next Wednesday. Uh, take care, guys, and uh, yeah, keep playing.